Oh, there he is. Oh, yes, the lawyer. Yes. Hello, sir. Thank you so much. Where's she going to work? Sir, where's she going to work? Where? Uh, Sydney, okay. California. She's taking the California yeah, bar and the yes. Louisiana bar. Good morning. Good morning. morning. We'll call this work session to order, and I hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going to move into the first item. Okay. Um, public comment. Uh, clerk, do we have anyone signed up? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Larry Pierce signed up this morning. Mr. Pierce, if you could come forward and please state your address and the subject matter this morning. It's the report. Oh, okay. December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor Day. Um, Mr. Pierce. Facility is important. Um, we just, uh, of course, keep the presentation to a three minute, we have a three minute limit. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. So, commissioners, and uh, I got a little confused over these days because four days of kind of hanging around. Uh, Sometimes I gotta get over that emotional part. <clears throat> Dang, I don't know why I do it because I know y'all think I'm mean. All right. Today is December second. <coughs> to many people, it's a happy month. There was a time. It was a time, approximately five days from today, that it wasn't. That was December 7th on a Sunday. Now, to equate it with most of you and how old you are, I was in the 40s. Some of you is in the 50s. <coughs> Majority of you probably born in the 60s and 70s. So... Nobody knew where Hawaii was. So, you had just come back from church if you were little, and your parents had just come back, and they were eating dinner at approximately 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. And exactly at 7.30 a.m., Four to seven, the first wave of 700 airplanes came into the island of Oahu. They weren't concerned about the other five or six. 350 came in, and an hour later, another 350 came in. <coughs> and when that happened, we'll change hats here, because when that happened, the Arizona took two direct hits. You saw the movie Terra Tora, Tora Tora. Some people argue and they think it's torpedoes. It was not. The Japanese had sharpened some bombs that weighed 1,700 pounds. And one of the direct hits was in the forward area directly above 500 tons, tons. A ton is 2,000 pounds, 500 tons of ammunition. And it went down through the first floor, the second floor, and it hit that room. And when it did, 229 men perished. Body parts all over. Admiral Kidd, that was his flagship. His hand was on a railing, and they found nothing of him, but they found his academy ring from Annapolis welded to the bulkhead where they found it. So what I'm trying to get at is that it's hard to imagine, but when you were in school, there might have been 1,000, 1,300 people. Well, in exactly, exactly 14 minutes, everybody in your school perished. That's how many was on the Arizona. There was 1,500. Not all of them perished. 1,177 is still entombed. The concussion, the blast, killed them all. They're still on the ship today if you go there. There's two alive, and they're 98 years old. 
two alive out of the, they were 20 years old. That's it. You gotta be old as dirt, and I'm almost as old as dirt. Now, after they bombed the base there, they came over to your neighbor. Only thing that divides Hickam and Hawaii is a fence. And my mother, <laughs> she's a cute little brunette, five foot two. She went there in a 38 Buick with her friend to pick up my dad, it was Army Air Corps. And she's standing there, and all of a sudden these airplanes are coming all over. Who wants to bomb or start a war on Sunday? Sunday! Give Admiral Yamamoto credit. Beautiful day. It starts coming, the machine gun fire's going out, the airplanes are being blown up all over, and she goes under a deuce and a half truck. Well, 11 months later I was Mr. born. Mr. Pierce, yes, you've exceeded your three minutes, but I'm, you know I have a very profound respect for you were, I, I, I'm tricked you, to let you I tricked you out there. You said you were going to give me five minutes. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> keep going. I, you know, I have a deep respect. Okay. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll try to wrap it up. So all, all I'm trying to do is say, sometime Saturday, <coughs> which is December 7th, if nothing else, just remember your, your parents, your grandparents, because that war advanced us in technology and changed the world. Even though the Civil War killed more people than any other war. World War I was bad. But World War II, we're still living and have memories of it. And the world is better because of it in many ways. Women went to work. Rosie the Riveter. Women put on the coveralls and they took the man's job. And today, they're still taking jobs. <laughs> and maybe the men can stay home and have babies. So anyway, uh, it's, it's close to my heart. Uh, my mother would have been 95. And I apologize for being emotional. <laughs> it gets to me. But just remember, if it hadn't been for Pearl Harbor, I wouldn't be here. So that's a consolation, it's good or bad. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Peterson. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you for sharing about Pearl Harbor. Harbor. I really appreciate that. That's why I wanted to just extend a little extra time for you. All right, uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, tomorrow if you could just look at our minutes and we will approve these minutes accordingly. Um, so please just take a look at our minutes for tomorrow. Uh, presentation, we have a presentation next and it's a Connect Douglas video presentation by Danielle Cherry Tuber uh, from the collab collaborative firm. Good morning, Danielle. Good morning. Madam Chair, respected commissioners, uh, neighbors, friends. Uh, my name is Danielle Cherry Hoover and I'm representing the collaborative firm. So I am very happy to present two videos. As you know, Connect Douglas recently launched earlier this year. And because something is new, we like to educate and inform as much as possible. So these two videos are resource tools um, out in the marketplace. One, the first step would be a 30 second video and that is airing on Comcast. So. If you're watching television, uh, please keep an eye out for that on Comcast television stations. I'll say more about that a little bit later. Uh, the second you will see is what we call a how-to video. That how-to is how to ride, read a schedule, etc. So I'll show those in, in, in that order, the 30 second and then the longer three minute how-to video. Before doing so, I absolutely want to thank Gary, his, his staff, and Jamal, but most importantly, Rick Martin, uh, and TJ and everyone else with DCTV who helped produce these videos. Uh, this is my first time working with TJ directly and his team and it was amazing. Um, we had tight deadlines and we shot, edited, and, and put this out um, to show you. So we're very proud of the collaboration that we have with the videos. So I at least wanted to say thank you to TJ and just give kudos to him uh, and Greg and their staff.
At Canuck Douglas, our job is to con Again, 30 second video. The next you'll see is the housing video. At Connect Douglas, our goal is to connect you to the people, places, and events that are important to you. We offer fixed route bus service that is convenient, economical, and easy to use. Let's take a ride on one of our buses. First, look at one of our schedules. We have dedicated fixed routes, and each has its own schedule. See which route best serves location where you want to go. The schedule shows where you can board the bus and the time when it will pick you up. All the bus routes connect. For example, if you are riding on a Route 10 bus, you can transfer to the Route 20 bus at no charge. You can even transfer from the Route 40 bus to Cobbling Route 30 at no charge. This transfer is located on South Service Road near the Riverside Epicenter and Six Flags. This transfer gives you access to MARTA at the HE Home Station, which opens the entire Metro Atlanta area to you. By looking at the schedule, you determine where you need to board the bus. All bus stops have Connect Douglas branded signs. We have almost 100 stops along the four fixed bus routes. We ask that you be at the stop five to 10 minutes before the bus is expected to arrive. You can also access and track all Connect Douglas buses by using your smartphone. Download the Passio Go mobile app from the Apple App Store or Google Play and choose Connect Douglas at the select agency prompt. This app tells you how close the bus is to where you want to board. When the bus arrives at your pickup location, be sure to have the correct fare for boarding the bus. <coughs> the standard one-way fare is only $2.50 or $1 for senior citizens, students, and individuals with disabilities. Remember, the driver does not carry money, so it is important that you have the correct fare. For your convenience, we offer multi-trip passes. Passes can be purchased at the Douglas County Transportation Center at 8800 Doris Road in Douglasville. Passes are available for 10 trips or unlimited trips during a 31-day period. No need to pay when boarding with these passes. As you board the bus, put your money in the fare box or show the driver your multi-trip pass. Find a seat and relax. All of our buses have free Wi-Fi. Connect Douglas drivers announce each stop. Be alert when approaching a location where you want to get off the bus. If you need to get off at a location that is not a designated stop, no problem. Just pull the alert cord above the seats and the driver will pull over at the safest location for you. Watch your step as you get off the bus. If you plan to use Connect Douglas to return to your original boarding location or a different location, check the schedule again for the time you need to board. We want you to enjoy your ride with Connect Douglas, but there are a few rules we ask you to follow. Be courteous to your driver and fellow passengers. No food or drinks on the buses. No guns or weapons. Registered service dogs are allowed. Other pets are allowed only if they are crated. Connect Douglas has a friendly staff that is always ready to help you. For more information, please call 770-949-7665 or visit connectdouglas.com. Visit us on Facebook and Instagram using at Connect Douglas. Thank you for using Connect Douglas. We hope you enjoy the ride. At Connect Douglas, our goal is to connect you to... Thank you. Do you have any other feedback or any questions that I can entertain or clarify? Okay. Um, we have any questions the Yeah, I, I'll, I'll frame this. And this is to, to my peers. Um, this uh, this video was um, shared with us. The last one was shared with us during our transportation committee meeting. What we thought was important that um, before it went public, you guys had a chance to look at it as well. Um, obviously, it's a joint decision to, to, to even pursue transit here in, in Douglas County, and so I thought that was important. So again. Um, at this point, so here's the question then, in setting that up, so now that they've had a chance to take a look at that, what is the plan to, to, to unveil that second video and how will you distribute it? Yes, just to, to clarify, Commissioner, the second video that you watch, what we call the how-to video, uh, we want it uh, to share to the larger group as a whole before putting out into the marketplace. So this second video has the opportunity to not only be attached as a link to email blasts, again, to churches, organizations, um, nonprofits, business communities, residents, um, and citizens, but the, also uh, within Douglas County assets. So in the Douglas happenings, that link in that video will replace what's current. Um, there is what we call a PSA on the Douglas uh, 
happenings, if you might, may, uh, if you see those emails, that video will also be there. Um, it would also would be within all DCTV assets. So in the marketplace, via all digital channels. In addition, please feel free to share. We'll make this available to you all as well. So it is public facing um, after today. Okay. The second question that I'll yield um, to my colleagues is the, the reason that we even did this video, and really uh, Madam Chair had sort of suggested during our um, transportation mm -hmm. committee meeting, is we realized that for the most part, if you think about Douglas County, we weren't very, we, we had transportation in Gary Knows, we had mobility, but it's very segmented. We had our seniors and we had our um, very one offs, but it wasn't even mass transportation. So if you grew up in Douglas County, you really had no exposure to a broader metro system. If you knew from more industrialized cities um, or counties, uh, perhaps you had exposure and you were used to how to use this new system. So we recognized in some of the early feedback during these first 90 days that the public we need to be educated on like now, how do I get on? How do I even read this schedule? And though I know it, I was, you know, rode the number two Palmetto Fairbairn on, you know, down on Roosevelt Highway going to my first job down at Riches in downtown Atlanta. Um, and when I began my banking career it, it, in, the, in the credit office, it's one of those where but I had experience. So think about those people who, who want to use it, but yet there's always that I don't want to know that I don't know what I don't know. And so we recognized that we needed to acknowledge the citizens where they were. You know, as part of you know, being an educator, I thought it was important, like, well, let's, let's teach them. Let, let's spend some time and make sure they're educated versus assuming they know how to use this, right? And, and people think, well, it's that, it, it, it should be that hard. Yes, it matters, right? Let's, let's not treat citizens a certain way. And so we advocated on behalf of the citizens to create this video, and I thought it was appropriate. And education is important. I mean, having, I mean you, you, we're trying to formulate a habit. People have to make sure that the system is stable, it works, it's responsive. Um, I can see the bus stops. There's the existence of bus stops. Um, uh, it's timely. Um, all those things that we promised, um, we got some feedback. And so we appreciate you guys being here helping us educate. So this was the first step in educating yes, the public on using this. Um, and um, I'll just defer there, and I'm sure I yield. Okay. Any questions, uh, Mr. Guyton? Yeah. Uh, are y'all going to be uh, tweaking the routes because some routes are not being written very much, um, especially the one down Riverside. I think two or three people a day, something like that. But uh, are you going to be changing some of these routes to so, in incorporate more people? The one good thing that I can um, tell you, Commissioner, is that with anything new, um, opportunity for change is there as well. Um, within the video, if you notice, it was very general. What we would try to do is keep things evergreen. So if there is a need for change, um, and Gary and his staff say, you know, we have analytics to say, hey, ridership here versus here, we can absolutely change digital. Um, if there is a tweak to the sign, we can shoot and re-edit that portion as well. So anything on our end, as far as educating the community, it will coincide and it will um, be parallel to those things that happen within the Transportation Department and Connect Douglas. And I can't remember who said it, but they said they were going to go down Highway 5 more. Uh, Gary, was that you? <laughs> down to Kings Highway or some place like that. We'll talk about that a little more as we go on, but, but uh, directly uh, to answer your question, Commissioner, yes, uh, we are playing changes on three of our routes. Uh, route 30 uh, will be one of the routes that we do in the that That's the, 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 the Thornton Road South Riverside okay. route. Uh, we're going to be making changes to it, <coughs> also uh, to Route 20 and to Route uh, 40. Route 40 is the connector route uh, from Douglasville to Thornton Road, Lithia Springs. And right now that route, uh, part of it is on the expressway. And we're going to take it off the expressway, run it down Fairburn Road South to Lee Road, and cut across uh, the county from Lee Road all the way up to South Sweetwater. What about on the western side uh, that I've mentioned before, the senior citizens complex right there outside Mirror Lake? Um, you know, they would certainly use it, I think. <laughs> is there any talk about extending it down to that? There is talk about that. That's not going to be in our first 
wave of changes, but yes, ma'am, that that is on our minds, and we continue to talk about that. I think there's uh, 300 seniors. There's a lot there. down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I yield back. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. I guess my other question is just sharing off that. The other 300 seniors want to get on the bus? Is that what you tell them? Or were they just that 300 mm -hmm. seniors just in the neighborhood? No, there's a complex senior citizens okay. complex. So my question <laughs> though is, um, uh, first of all, I saw I, I saw this a week or so ago. I don't know when you guys started airing this on TV, which I thought was really, I was shocked because it wasn't just on DC 23 or anything like that. So when I saw it, I was like, wow, that's really good. Uh, the uh, great job on the video, but again, I'm assuming we'll tweak it as we go to kind of find those those needs and necessities to kind of figure out more what I'm getting at, will there be videos that will be more geared toward those seniors that oh, would sorry. get a better understanding of where, how to to kind of get access to it. Absolutely. Versus the millennials who could run off, you know, twenty and jump on. Right. So are we gonna kinda of strategically try to because we gotta navigate this thing to, to assure those that don't know about it, know about it and get the information to those and educate them on how it's done and where it's done and where the stops are. And I'm glad to note that we are going to be looking at some additional, some changes as to the routes and all that. Yes, yeah, sir. First okay. of all, what I, I think one of the best words I can say is fluid. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned not keeping anything evergreen because as something is new, mm -hmm. there will be transitions to that to make yes. it the best possible product as things evolve. Mm -hmm. um, what I can tell you, mentioned about millennials, um, I'm, I'll, we'll be at Strayer University today, tomorrow, and Wednesday um, mm -hmm. as an engagement piece. Um, this video would be um, uh, available to them as well. Um, and speaking to them, I'm going to elaborate more on the Passio Go app mm -hmm. because that's the lane they're in. Mm -hmm. Um, with also with this video, it's a resource tool. Currently, you may have re uh, seen the press release about uh, how to groups and learning sessions, um, especially offered within Gary's department, um, and then other engagement things that we would do here with the collaborative firm. Mm -hmm. That's a tool as well. So we speak the language of the writer. So if we're, like I mentioned before, today, tomorrow, Wednesday, talking to students at Australia University, it will be the 30 second video in Passio Go. That's the lane they're in. Um, uh, organizations or seniors, um, Commissioner Guider mentioned before, we can get a group of them of how to ride, mm -hmm. how to read the schedule. Um, you s may have saw in the piece the, the, the lady buying a ticket at the counter. Mm -hmm. That wasn't staged. She was there. And yeah. we just had her permission uh, to shoot on the video. She was also gave a testimony on social media. She's a senior. She bought a senior pass at the counter. So we're speaking to her in that language. She's a more active rider. She used that as a supplement to her, her car when she doesn't feel like driving or it's in the shop. So she likes to ride. Um, so she said herself that she's an advocate for others and she's um, even speaking with her, talking to her organization. So to answer your question short firm, yes, we speak the language of the rider, whomever they are. Good, good. And, and you did mention so the Facebook, the Twitter, the socials, you'll Social. socialize it there for sure. All digital, all digital channels. So you saw in the longer video, it mm -hmm. was at Connect Douglas social mm -hmm. media handles. Mm -hmm. You didn't see it on the 30 second because it was about visibility <coughs> and um, audience. Mm -hmm. And that the 30 second is on all Comcast stations. Okay, last but not least, how soon before we is it going to be a quarterly, but more probably for vice chair with the updates of kind of how we how we're trending. Hopefully, we're trending to where mm -hmm. you know that the numbers are improving as to ridership, uh, but when can we, should we expect some numbers, some future numbers as to kind of, you know, the first numbers were what they were, which I thought were, were good. I'm hoping that the next number can yeah. come with, with, it's going to be great, you know, that we need two more buses in addition to what we have because of what the ridership did. I'll refer to Gary about the numbers for ridership, but I'll at least briefly talk about okay. in the marketplace. Okay. That's a very quickly. Digital, we can have numbers. That's the beauty of um, social media. It's an online focus group, basically. You do what works, and you tweak what, uh, what doesn't immediately. Mm -hmm. So digitally, we can make changes as they go mm -hmm. and increase visibility right away. But as far as ridership only, oh. Yeah. Commissioner, as you recall, back in mid-October, we 
provided a very extensive report to the, to the Board of Commissioners that, that went back and highlighted our, our first few months of operation. And what we'll do next, our, our next big report we'll issue to you probably in mid-January uh, that updates uh, the October, November, December period as well as everything we've done uh, from our launch. Uh, we, we talked about the frequency of reports in one of our transportation committee meetings and, and we sort of decided that, that uh, an extensive quarterly report okay. uh, would be the best way to provide information to, to the Board of Commissioners. Yes. And so those numbers will reflect previous numbers to kind of see where we're trending up, yes, down, sir. sideways. Yes, sir. But, but at least we can kind of get a big gauge as to kind of how, where we're going. Yeah. In hopes that the Transportation Department will actually look at those numbers and start trying to make adjustments as to why we need to move from one uh, street to another. Depends exactly. based on <coughs> as we just talked about ridership and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, we, we're collecting different kinds of data every day and, and we're analyzing things as we go along. So, so how do we get to that, that person or, or me uh, that might want it, but, and I always use uh, reference Hunter's Ridge, you know, which is a huge subdivision. If you look at the back side of Hunter's Ridge, there's no way I'm gonna walk out of the place Hunter's Ridge get on the bus at Malone, or not even Malone, on 92. How are we trying to find those those big pockets that might would use it, but it's too far to get to it? Are we, are we, is there a strategy or some type of planning that we're trying to look at those individuals or, or try to get closer to those individuals? Or maybe there isn't anybody that would ride on the street using that as a hypothetical. Well, we. We're not going into individual subdivisions and do anything like that, but uh, we hope that we're reaching most everybody through our, our, our massive multimedia uh, marketing uh, campaign. <coughs> but for, for the people that you're talking about, like who live back in the subdivision and they, they can't walk all the way up to the front of the subdivision, that's the purpose of our flex trips, where they can call and make a reservation and we'll actually go to their curb to pick them up. Okay, so th there is a way around it, but I'm just, I I'm thinking that if by chance they're holding what is one individual that you're, you're after, the masses, and I'm just trying to find out more about it, where are they, you know, and if we find or tap into that, that source, then we can hopefully make sure that we provide that mobility for that or those individuals. So, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a working process, so I mean, great job and, and good stuff. So. I'll yield back and uh, I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mr. Johnson. All right, we'll move on to the next item. Our next item um, will be related to a public hearing 2020 budget. Uh, Jennifer Holman, our Director Holman. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, we did pass out what um, Mark sent electronically to y'all as far as the budget. Um, the second page is um, any items that have not been added to the budget that have been requested um, or being proposed um, within the budget. And as well as um, <coughs> Mark, uh, or County Administrator, um, spoke with our uh, Risk and Safety Director over the weekend and um, it looks like that our insurance premium for property and liability, um, we're going to need an additional $237,000 um, <coughs> than what was currently budgeted. He said that while the industry standard is 9 to 11 percent in annual increases uh, due to our loss ratios and other considerations, the 2020 renewal is a 20 percent increase which is 350000 from last year. Um, so we had originally put in around $2 million, and the renewal uh, we just got this weekend was $237,000 more um, due to the, um, like I said, the loss ratio, ratios and other considerations. So it was about a 20% increase. So that will be something we'll need to um, list out um, on this. Well, uh, but I do have a presentation for tomorrow's mm -hmm. um, public hearing. Okay. Um, <coughs> it's a 15-20 minute slide, just kind of summarizing what you see. 
what you saw. Okay. And we sent those, those as well, mm -hmm. that presentation in that same email. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, again, um, we have new commissioners, so j and also since we're going into a public hearing, and this is a work session, um, so uh, Director Holman, um, what is the process um, between now and the actual vote? Like, how, how do we? What is the process of getting input from the commissioners? Yes, we heard it during the budget retreat. Just the process. Sure. Um, <clears throat> what we'll do is continue to take any comments or notes during um, today or tomorrow's public hearing. Um, I'll meet with Mark and then Mark will give us direction on what to present um, when the budget would be asked to be adopted at the next meeting. So additional comments, uh, questions, concerns can be addressed to Mark and then we'll um, bring those before. What I did last year was show what changes, if there were any changes, what changes will happen from the public hearing to the adoption. So that you see each process, each layer, you saw what was presented at the budget retreat, and you saw the changes made at the budget retreat. Now you're seeing the, um, what's presented at the public hearing, then at the final for the adoption, you'll see any changes from that time period from the public hearing to the adoption. And, and second to that, again, I'll, I'll be brief today. I don't want to get in and get out, just get back to Thanksgiving. But, um, so we're going through this process, it's the budget. So there's a hearing, and it's tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, in which we will be open to the public. There's no vote, um, per se, by board commissioners. Um, we may give comment, we may not give comment, uh, but we are, um, tomorrow's a hearing, and we're here to listen. And I guess um, to our county clerk, um, do we capture comments from the public through the public hearing, or we just use allow the, the physical record of electronics to capture it? How does that work? Um, I mean, I usually make notes of what their what their comments are, mm -hmm. and they're incorporated into the minutes. Okay. Just, just again for the record, for the public who may be new at this, All right? So we go through the process, and at the very end, at some point, there is an adoption uh, moment. Is that true? Correct. That meeting is at night. Yes. And in both cases, the public are allowed. Now, that's different. Public comment is different than the public hearing. What's the difference? Public comment. Now, you can answer or you can answer. Yeah. As far as the budget, there's um, only required one public hearing. Yep. Um, so that would be tomorrow. Um, then the following, or the last meeting in December, is actually um, does not require a public hearing. It's just you have the budget there and I usually like I said give a short presentation of any changes and then ask for adoption of the budget. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I won't labor just at ten o'clock in the morning and that's when we have the actual public hearing. Uh, we have the, the vote meeting which is six PM mm -hmm. the next meeting, but we're not hearing. We just to your point, it's just a vote. So again it's process. Um, I'm sure we wouldn't uh, not want to hear the public's um, mm -hmm. input on this. Um, it's just for the process sake. So all right, I'm going to leave that at that. Last thing is on health care, to your point. Um, it is something that it's really, you know, I was coming in with my mother this morning, about 8.42, we're at, going through Martin's, going the line to get my normal breakfast. And I, 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 we were talking about health care because we listened to NPR. And um, it's, it's not going away. The cost of health care is going to a point where almost it will exceed everything else, right? You're, you'll be working to live, right? And so as I look at our local budget, I'm looking at, okay, look at this trajectory. And it's the fastest growing thing in our budget is health care. It's outstripping salary, bonuses. It, 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 the scale of it is like, do y'all see this? Pension, like, do y'all see this? Right, and it, it's one of those, how do you get ahead of it? Right, yes, I know you have, you know, I, I get, we're, we've got a local play. Uh, we don't get to print money like um, Congress, right? We, we can't run a deficit, right? There's no deficit, you know, spending type of play here at the local level. We have to have a balanced budget. But with that constraint and that compression, it, it's a challenge that says, look, we're just talking about normal operations. We're not talking about, our budget's not talking about big growth opportunities. Various rules and stuff. It's like, look, look at this budget. It's like, y'all see this thing? 
right? And so I, I, I encourage the public, we, we welcome your input on this, right? Um, it, it's in my household, it's a kitchen table conversation about health care and expenses of, of just living, right? We appreciate that the, um, the committees that was involved in our, our health um, um, and giving that um, on point and stuff and um, the employee's contribution, right? You know, um, so we get it. We understand this and um, again, hopefully uh, we'll be able to work through this process and stuff. It's always a challenge during this period of time. This is probably my 11th budget, right? I've been through the recession, I've seen it all, right? So this is, we're, we're good, but it's one of those like, you need to know what y'all looking at, right? Um, we've, uh, I've always been honest about our financials. We don't politicize them. Um, we're in a good place, but we still got room to grow as we transition. We, we, it, it is what it is. So the question comes to our leadership and how do we now take us forward, right? Uh, with the help of the public and their input, we should be in a good place. So, that's all I have, Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator, if you could explain to me uh, the items proposed on the commissioners after the treat. Uh, if we could just talk about those. These are new to me. Town. This is as a peer since I left. Can you explain this? Thing? Sure. These were, and, and Mark, if you want to go into more detail, these were the ones that were presented to Mark um, after we left the budget retreat or during between <coughs> the end of the budget retreat um, till uh, I believe it was Wednesday. Um, one was from Commissioner Carthen, uh, the NACO slash ACCG training and part time aid marketing intern for 50000 uh, Commissioner Carthen, uh, strategic sourcing, savings slash improvement, RFQs, 50000 um, a library concept design drawing at 10000 Commissioner Robinson, countywide leadership diversity inclusion workshop seminar at 50000 uh, Robinson, uh, Commissioner Robinson, a webmaster, website administrator for the salary benefits and equipment of 63600 and then items proposed by commissioners after the retreat that were funded, that would be funded by um, sources other than the general fund. Um, Commissioner Robinson had requested, I believe it was discussed at the Transportation Committee, the collaborative firm uh, for Connect Douglas used the contingency or discretionary in the CTF Capital Transportation Fund of 100000 And then there was a, um, commission, uh, a county administrator comment regarding one item that was in the budget that Mark, if you want to elaborate on that. Yeah, so I talked to Russ about the uh, about the software for the tax commissioner and appraisal. Mm -hmm. We feel that it'd be better off if that was in IT's budget, since they will essentially they're the ones that, that maintain New World and work with everything, and um, so that would essentially be the same. So we would just request that that would be, if approved, be included in IT IS's budget. Instead of the tax commissioners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any objections to that board of commissioners? It is still 960. Yes, ma'am. The, the okay. amount hasn't changed. Okay. 976. Oh, no. Okay, 976. Okay. Okay, now if you could just explain to me where this 236 is coming from. 223. 60, is it coming off that 10% or what, what? Well, these are currently not included in the budget. These were just items that were being proposed by the commissioner um, for discussion for today or tomorrow's discussion. So if they were approved, it would change the 10%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got to look at another plan. The 10 can move the 10. But I'm just saying, I, I, I'm not a, objecting to these items. I think they're wonderful. They're great. Um, we need to move the county forward. But the 10%, we've got that 10% in place, and that's something I have to stick with. That deals with our credit rating for Moody's and S&Ps as well. So we can, if we can find another way, if we can shoot for, I believe right now you have 5% coming in, if we can shoot for 6% coming in, that is with them what they need to do it. Because I think it's, it's a great idea. I like it. Sounds great. Commissioner. Uh, Okay. Well, just to <clears throat> uh, lead off of what you just said about the tax commissioners, the software, mm -hmm. the software for the tax office has always been under the tax commissioner. Why, why is this? So just I know it's new world, but it's still <clears throat> specific to his department and the appraisal department. Yes, that's correct. 
Um, and IT is not asking for it, please. Yeah, but IT is requesting that it be put in there, but actually IT the software, yes ma'am. the software, we don't know what that looks like and how it fits, how it works. Not that it's a bad idea, but the department about the software. It's just never been done, but a lot of things. Are you back? Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll also, but, but I, I mean, I get why they would want it to be in their department so they can kind of control and understand <coughs> what bandwidth and everything else, computers, <coughs> whatever that goes along with it as to why. But are we taking it out per department, meaning you got um, Benny, uh, appraisal, uh, assessors, I'm sorry, assessors, the tax commissioner's office, and so on. So are we breaking it out like that? No. Or are we just putting in the, the no, IT? whole system into <coughs> I have one right. The only reason I would say, because each, I don't know the software, is the tax commissioner software different from uh, any <coughs> software? <coughs> they all work together. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, they so they all work together. Okay. I mean, that's that's doable. I, I get why. But yeah. And I'll also, we would need to go out for an RFQ on this because it's not a module of New World. This is totally separate software. Understood. Um, I, I asked me to be involved in that process. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but, but this is for the tax commissioner side of it and the assessor's office. It's, it's mainly uh, geared toward contacting and communicating with the state. Mm -hmm. And back and forth between and the and departments. And yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tax commissioner. Right, right, exactly. But um, just, as long as we don't get lost with that side of it. Yes. And, and I don't think we will, but as long as we And everybody will be involved in the process. We right. just feel, when talking with us, we feel it's better off if that's in his part. Okay. I mean, the numbers doesn't change, though. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right, exactly. Nothing yeah. changes yeah. Outside, yeah. Of, outside of who would pay for it out of what department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are you? Yes. Yes. So, Jennifer, can you go over with the DRRs that are recommended by the chairman? Because it seems like that department is five million. Sure. These were the ones that were presented um, at the budget retreat, um, as well as I think there were some changes that were added during the retreat that um, added up to the five million. One is the uh, DOT, the mowing. I believe it was four mowings at 100,000 apiece. Mm -hmm. DOT millings at 100,000. The risk, uh, we had two executive session uh, discussion items, personnel risk and safety in elections. Uh, courtroom audio, uh, 20,000. Uh, public defender needed an assistant public defender uh, with salary benefits and equipment at 121,000. Uh, the solicitor, part-time paralegal at 40,000. Sheriff cars, if they were leased, 35 Tahoe pursuit vehicles at 328,000, and the sheriff agreed to pay uh, up to 500,000 for the equipment of the 665,000. Um, deputy raises in the sheriff's office for the, um, as we call it, the boots on the ground um, for the for the deputies that are on the streets uh, to get them at uh, a comparable rate. Um, 17 school resource officers. For the uh, schools, uh, the Board of Education did um, or has so far contributed or said that they would contribute $595,000 toward this cost. However, we just want you to know that this cost that's currently in the budget um, does not include um, the vehicles, the equipment, or uniforms. I believe the sheriff was going to be working out or working with the Board of Education on those discussions. I'm not quite sure if we have to follow up and update on that. Um, the Douglas County, I'm sorry, the Parks Playground Equipment at Fair Play and Bill Arp at 121000 uh, Douglas County's 150th birthday celebration at 150000 IT PC Refresh, uh, Refresh program we do with all of our computers and laptops at 150000 The Enhanced Email Security uh, for IT is 26500 Superior Court, Judge Adams, uh, have a component for mental health, homeless house, and slash housing for 150000 The Tax Commissioner, new <coughs> software, 976000 Tax Commissioner, uh, part-time, full-time staff request at 80000 
part-time content uh, I'm sorry tax commissioner contingency at 150,000 and then a parks and recreation personnel executive session at 15,000 which totals five million forty nine thousand four hundred fifty eight dollars just rough math. Um, about 125 to more than that. Almost $250,000 of that is just for salaries for new people coming on board. Right. Not including the sheriff's <coughs> deputy rate. Because we have to remember, and just because mm -hmm. I'm on the benefits committee, right. like anytime you add extra people who are full time, you're going to add more to the pot, it's yeah. going to compound. Mm -hmm. So we automatically know once we put them on mm -hmm. going forward, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be recurring. Got me. So just wanted to make sure we understand that. And, um, and you said we are working with, or the sheriff is working with DOE. He was supposed to be having discussions. I don't know how those discussions have come about, but yes, we were supposed to have discussions with them about covering um, the vehicles, equipment, and uniforms because that would be an additional about six hundred and eighty thousand dollars for the seventeen for the system. Right, yes, right. That we possibly may have to pick up if they don't. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I just wanted to know on the record that, you know, we may collect the taxes, but 67% of that goes to the Board of Education, who also is sitting on a surplus, which we don't have. So we just want to make sure we, we are fair across the board here in burdening some of these. Um, okay, well, I yield. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, There's just one thing before you go. Yeah. <coughs> I thought I had also included forty thousand dollars in here for the uh, commissioners ten thousand. Is that in here? You remember? Yes, ma'am. That was part of the operating. Um, I'm glad you brought that up, and I'll I have that labeled uh, tomorrow. But yes, um, part of the, at the yes at the top we did um, have the constituent services um, for district commissioners at ten thousand dollars a district for a total of forty thousand. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be real quick. And again, um, just for the public, this is what the public hires um, us, and especially at the district and um, commission level, is our, our primary responsibility from legislators at the local level is to set the budget. Period. Right. So this conversation is something that it warrants for us to sort of spend some time with um, for the most part. So, a couple of comments um, to the tax commissioner. Um, I'm going to lean on you guys to sort of figure that out. Um, I, I, we let the sheriff have, as a constitutional officer, his system. I'm curious as to why. I, I really, it's one of those sometimes you don't have to take a position. So let your peers work it out. Like, okay, but why can't the tax commissioner have it in his? But okay, I get IT. So then it becomes a matter of control. That's the internal, that's the executive. They'll work that out. <coughs> to Mr. Mitchell's point, the numbers better be right at the end of the day. Which brings me to my next point. Now we know tax commissioner and assessments and all that. So we've got this system, and I, I'm, I'm um, and this is something Commissioner uh, Emeritus Mole here stated that, like, at some point we need to make sure we got the assessments right. right. And we had the system that we put in and we took out. We didn't do it. We backed out the digest. We did this. There's a lot of stuff just like, okay, guys, get it together. I appreciate the institutional knowledge that people represent. But your technology <coughs> and, and your output is not as stable as I would like. I appreciate the higher standards and double standards. But it's time now, like, okay, now, since we're at this, we're going to drop a million dollars over here, put money over here. Y'all going to get the math right. I don't need no man and stuff. Y'all come back like, we don't know that. Is. We can't get this in. We're backing it out. And I have to look at, like, what do you mean? Y'all been doing this so long? Have we become that complacent? That, <coughs> like, it don't matter. Oh, we'll get that next year. It's like, what? I need y'all to really think about this. That, 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 and I appreciate the sentiments. I mean, it's not like District 2. That's so awful. I love them. Because they, it, it, it's, it's for real. It's like, no, this thing has transitioned for the better. 
And I appreciate that. <coughs> you just have to listen sometimes. Um, and it's one of those where, come on guys, we can do better. Get the assessments right. Get the math right. If you ask my peanuts, like, ah, we should not be in a place that we're guessing. It's not that hard, right? It's not that hard, right? We're given the tools. This commission has been always kind to staff. Uh, for the most part, we acknowledge that it's a thousand people who are helping provide services for 150 <coughs> strong, going to 150 <coughs> unintended. Right? Take the kids out of the way for a minute with school board. And, and we, 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 we do a lot with less, right? You gotta take care of basically 100,000 adults, a thousand people. We appreciate you, right? We gotta get this right. So we're talking a budget that's a hundred million dollars. <coughs> yeah, there's some things in there in the budget that the commissioners are at, this commissioners are asking for stuff. It's like out of a hundred million dollar budget, you mean you can't spend a hundred thousand dollars to cut that grass off? If you look at everything that's being said, what impacts the citizens? All that was like internal, what I call toys. It makes it work, but the citizens like, but well, can I get my grass cut? Can I get my road repaid? <coughs> Like, and so sometimes I'm always like, I'm, I look at the staff and I look at the citizens. I look at staff and I look at the citizens. And we as elected sort of, we're the ones that have to reconcile this thing as officials in or out. And so I'm just, I'm, it's one of those where, okay, it's enough, guys. It's like we kick the can, we talk around things. It's like, come on, raise your performance. If we give you the tools, what do you mean we're just doing the same thing we're doing just with electronics? It's like, come on now, provide the information. Make sure our values are right. I mean, I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, okay, is our digest right, right? Or is it not? <coughs> People always are there tinkering with it. Right? Okay, I'm saying, okay, is my digest right? <coughs> are the values right? I can't trust the system because y'all keep backing out using a manual process. It's like, how long y'all been doing this? And we're spending this type of money? So Commissioner Mitch, I'm, I'm trusting you, like we will if this goes forward, like I need we, we need somebody who's gonna oversee and make sure this process is right. Right? You can't just like what well, you gotta you know, I still have not got an honest answer. Did we buy the assessor assessors a new system or not? Is it live or not? I've yet to get that in three years. Right now I'm gonna put another system in there. And nobody's answering the question, but yet the citizens are looking at us like, okay, is it right? So I won't belabor it. The budget is what it is. Uh, we welcome the public input. But it's just those type of things that, like, come on, guys. We're not just spending to be spending. We want to be accurate. We want to be able to make sure that the, the, those people who are paying taxes, we all do, property taxes, that they're getting their right values. And y'all cannot look me in my face right now and tell me that that thing is accurate. I'd like that. I'm going to wait with anybody who wants to say, if I had to look at my citizens in District 2 and say, well, to be honest, guys, I mean, it's, it's all relative. I mean, I'm, I, I know we're spending money, but it's time out for that. Get, get, get the math right so we can look our citizens in the eye with a definitive versus all the politics that goes into it. Like, man, don't politicize that. Just get the math right. So don't, don't, don't do that. We're going to move on, y'all. We need to move on to tab number five. Tab number five is to consider an amendment to Article 2 purchasing to add. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I just want to say I got one little okay. piece I want to add to some of this. I just want to make sure that some things here too. Though. Um, the BIR's recommendation. Just capitalizing on the five meal that we're looking at. And I guess my, my bigger question is going back to the school board and side of this. I think we've had this conversation before. And I know the school board is contributing, I think it's about five, I think so. I have something. $595,000. Compared to what we need to assist them with what we're uh, assuming willing to assist and pay forward is what? You take in the school resource officers plus all the equipment mm -hmm. which goes, that you're looking at, about a million. Eight hundred thousand and contributing right now only five hundred ninety-five thousand. Right. So who who went back and had the conversation with them to say hey, we agree to this? Now. Just using just that. The five ninety-five, I believe. Is what they, yes, that's, that's what they said they would pay. Got it. 
and then the sheriff was going to go back. Oh, I got that. The whole okay. sheriff going to contribute their portion. But who, who, who came back to agree with the numbers of roughly about a million plus that that um, we did, I'm assuming we decided this? Or who? who so the, as far as the, the numbers and the calls, that was just based on 17 resource officers. Oh, I understand. I, I got that. I got that. But who decided to say that's what we're going with this stuff? Because I don't recall me saying, oh, I'm, that's okay. Because I think my, my thing was, Either somebody to contribute more, mm -hmm. not that I don't want to contribute to the SRO, mm -hmm. SRO, 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 <laughs> SRO <laughs> officers, but I'm a little concerned with where we are budget wise because I go back to saying, I said this at our retreat, we look great on paper, <coughs> but can we, can we really pull this off? Can we really pull this off? And I'm already looking at $5 million that I'm trying to accommodate and talk about. That just that's just one big number that I'm looking at right now. And, and the part of that number is just using the SRO officers as the numbers. So uh, my initial question, who said just using those, that, 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 because keep in mind, you also have the budget, Jennifer, not that it's happening with you, but starting that day moving forward will be compounded the way this is what be an annual piece of the budget that will come through. What would that number be when it becomes annualized to us? What, I mean, I don't know if you know off the top of your head, but what would that roughly be, about a million plus? Mm -hmm. So next time around, this budget cycle, we're looking at a million plus. And plus, that would also go with the 46 or 45 of the, of the annual for this year. Mm -hmm. okay. So that would also be an additional. So if that's a million plus, we'd probably look at another half a meal or a meal on top of that, correct? Just I mean, I know Vice Chair is great at numbers. He can probably toss those numbers out with no, with no mm -hmm. problem. So roughly, we're looking at possibly starting off with a million dollars, a million and a half, trying to get this part of it right, but picking up another million plus two million to kind of continue it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't think we're thinking ahead. I think we're thinking in the moment. And I don't think the number's going to... I tell you, we look great on paper, but I don't think the numbers are going to justifiably be in our favor at the end of the year. Not the end of the year, when this is all when the smoke clears. Uh, so I go back to my initial question. So Mark, maybe you can talk to this. Who went to the school board and said we're okay with a million plus? So the school board came to us. Okay. okay well, and then as far as the numbers go, that's just based. I know that they've got the numbers. Right, the numbers they gave us. We want to protect, protect our kids. We want to make sure our kids are fine and our mm -hmm. teachers are good and I get all that. But I'm, I'm just, my concern is just that number alone. You know, I'm speaking on behalf of the five meal, just that, that number alone. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's interesting. Don't see how and where that's going to come from. So, as Vice Chair Robinson stated, I hope we are adding this up and I'm adding just roughly. And I still don't see it. Nothing against that. Nothing that you guys have done. But I, I still don't. I don't think we're there. I think we're, we're really, we're not being honest with ourselves. Other than we look good on paper. I'll leave it there, but we'll have a conversation later about some other stuff. I'll yield it. I yield it. Okay. We can move on to the next item. Let's go on to uh, tab number five to consider an amendment to Article Two, <coughs> purchasing to add a nine dash thirty five disadvantaged business enterprise program of the Douglas oh. County Court of Ordinance. Uh, Director Peacock, do you have a comment on this, or is this some something for tomorrow? Uh, would you rather just wait until tomorrow? Mm -hmm. But if you cool. just give us a just uh, this this came from the uh, purchasing oversight committee. Uh, the intent is to try to enforce a 15% DBE participation on all contracts over 250000 for a set of contracts that the county would normally enter into for awards from 50000 to 250000 We would ask vendors to use best efforts to meet the 15%. We will be tracking this going forward. We're trying to get a... Um, uh, Changes made to our database so that we can electronically track and uh, keep a, a, a firm grasp on um, how we're doing with DVE participation. Okay. Thank you. 
or if commissioners any questions about that, we just be able to discuss it tomorrow. Uh, Commissioner Carter. I'll just be quick. Um, the person oversight committee is a brand new committee, and um, we thought it um, worthwhile to <coughs> ensure that our small minority businesses, our women owned business, veteran owned businesses, really would have a stake in doing business with Douglas County. So this DBE really speaks to that. Um, I was rather shocked that Douglas County didn't have a DBE policy when I joined the board. Um, so I'm really excited that this is going forward, that this will be a part of our ordinance. And um, I hope to see the fruits of this labor um, this time next year as we look to see what our um, system has picked up and um, and how it will contribute to doing business in Douglas. So with that, I thank the Purchase and Oversight Committee, Vice Chairman, and, and um, for helping us to, to put this together. With that, I yield now, Chair. That's a very good um, comment, Commissioner Carpenter. That was one of the first things I asked, too, and I'm so glad that you're able to leave this committee uh, about the DBE when you first joined. But I know there's a lot of work involved to pull it together. Tab number six, we'll move on to residents. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, sure. Let me weigh in. Just for context, um, when I came on board in 09, um, and it's a decade ago. And um, I guess my other colleagues joined us, and well, the guy started in 11. Um, I started in 9, uh, in 08, in 10, in 10 elections. And it was a different time then. And it was a lot of resistance for women and, and, and minorities <coughs> in Douglas County. Um, the board at that time was very, um, it, it, it gave head service to the needs board, independent of the population, the census at that time. Um, it was one of those, well, why was it necessary? Um, all types of conversation, I, I recall with great memory um, that, well, <coughs> Atlanta stuff is unconstitutional. It's, it's all types of obstruction, all types of just simply subversion of different acknowledgement. <coughs> There's something that I've, I've fought for for this past decade to now see this, I can sit back in my place like, Phew. that wasn't easy, right? Uh, when, you, when we have walls <coughs> that exist in the county, it's one of those to be able to kick down one part of it to open it up and say, everybody gets to eat. When I look at the, the power structure of this county, that we got, take the, the thousand employees away, you probably got 500 people that represents the power, but what about the 100,000? What about those very talented and educated people who, who want to volunteer and be part of the fabric, but you have such resistance to even giving a shot? Um, if you have processes that were unfair, somewhat biased, right? Um, paperwork that sometimes was insufficient, and you sit there and you look at this, and one of the things that the citizens, and I'm doing this because it's a record, that they sent us down here to change, not to maintain. So when you look at the, the existing citizens, you look at the staff's action, it's like, wait a minute, this doesn't line up. Like, it, it's not, it, it's, there's no consideration. And so either you become part of what I call the swamp, Doug is no different than Washington, if you become part of it, then you become of no effect. Well, we're sitting out here for a reason to ensure as when they change, the system is the government. It's, it's our bureaucrats. It's the thousand people that have to change, not the faces, right? <coughs> it's the government, the people that actually deliver the work is what the five of us are supposed to be here to ensure that, okay, we're steering this direction right now. We won't go that way no more. And so, but sometimes it, you have to affect things through policy to sort of get attention. Like, okay, I guess we have to legislate this. Uh, because it, it's, and that's why I say sometimes you see the internal bias and in things that happen. So this, this is, I don't want this to be marginalized for a new commissioner to take on such uh, a meritorious, I mean, I just sat back in the cab for a seat and, and, and Madam Carthen took this and she was deliberate and took, took her time, um, but she was very thoughtful and all, you know, all of you guys were involved in helping her do the research and, Dawn, all of them brought back work that I think was meritorious to really see that, okay, this should be given consideration. And you're putting teeth behind 
it's not just that this, this symbolic lip service, but yet you're doing the same old things with the same old processes. So I, I, I commend Douglas County for this shift, and I hope that my peers will stand strong and adopt this fully. Thank you. We're going to move on to, uh, to, to <coughs> number six on the resolutions, resolution officially uh, consenting to the inclusion of certain Douglas County uh, at Bell, uh, Bell Room, uh, real uh, property taxes in the computation of the tax allocation increments from the city of Douglasville Tax Allocation District 1, downtown and Northside, to authorize the county attorney to perform certain acts necessary to accomplish the intent of the resolution to provide an effective date for this resolution and for other purposes. Um, Madam Chair, Bernard. thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, six, item six and, and ten are related. In okay. fact, item ten is going to be an exhibit attached to uh, item six, exhibit B. Okay. Exhibit A will be the city's approval of the TAD resolution, their approval of the TAD resolution back in September. Since the last comments I made to y'all at the last meeting, We've had follow-up conversations over Thanksgiving with the city's council, and I believe that the item 10, the intergovernmental agreement, is 99% final if <coughs> they accept the changes we made. I want to point out a couple things just so that you're aware of them. Uh, one, the item 10 is subject to the school board's pledge. Right now, the school board has entered a resolution to enter into an IGA, but they haven't actually entered into the IGA. Uh, ours is conditioned upon their entrance into the IGA with no pilot <coughs> back to them. In other words, they're, they're treated the same way as the county. What we didn't want is the county to six months from now find out the school board entered the IGA and then got a kickback and the county did. And so those are on the same level playing field. Two, the transaction costs. I believe the way the final version or the, the version that you have in front of you is item 10. The uh, council in Atlanta has agreed that the initial startup cost to the county will be borne by the city as a reimbursement up to a cap. So that is in here. Uh, also, the city's, the county's future costs in any financing uh, review or legal review or anything related to this TAD, it will be incurred by the city and reimbursed back to the county so there's no cost to this board. The last remaining item, I guess the only thing that was a little bit in play is we've stuck firm that the county's pledge of increment is conditioned upon the TAB being utilized for infrastructure. If for whatever the reason they decide to use it to pay third parties, we wanted the county to be able to approve that so you can monitor how your tax money is going because as I told y'all, the tax increment will be frozen on December 31st. Mm -hmm. The future growth will be pledged to the TAD area. And so we wanted, since that's a pledge of your future taxes, we wanted you to have at least a seat at the table to hear how it was being proposed to be spent if it went outside of public infrastructure. And you may ask, well, what would that mean? Well, if they decide to do any kind of grant aid or anything like that, we want to at least get to see it so that we can have a comment on it. I think Council in Atlanta for the city has agreed that probably that's doable since we held firm to the rest of it. Uh, but I think we're, the item six is ready to go. Item 10, which normally comes later, is getting coming at the same time. And item 10 will be, the only thing that I've changed on item 10 that you have in your computer is we've added the word also, uh, one place where it talks about your startup costs versus your future costs. So it was clear those were two different costs. Uh, I think the only thing in play is if they come back to us on anything, and we'll know today before tomorrow, Madam Chair, related to uh, not going to a public infrastructure. So I think both are ready to go. Uh, I feel good about the, everybody's work on this, and you know they they're. I think the city's happy from what I can understand. Okay. Any questions from the board? Comment about yeah. All right. Sounds pretty self-explanatory. Thank you so much, Mr. Bernard. We're we'll move on to tab number seven, and that means we're already. Let me just circle back just for a second. So we've already taken care of tab number six. And and yes, yes. ma'am. Okay. okay, tab number seven, a resolution supporting locally established building design standards for residential dwellings. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'll give you a quick background on this, but um, as many of you are aware, during the 2019 legislative sessions, two bills were introduced 
um, that are still alive, but they would prohibit local governments from adopting any design standards on single family housing. So it would remove our ability to have any control on a lot of things, but it's including um, exterior styles of housing, exterior cladding material, types and styles of roofs, porches, architectural windows, doors, number and type of rooms. So any of the ordinances that we have in place that, you know, so you're going to have so much rock, stone, brick, any of that kind of stuff will have to go away. Um, so the resolution is being proposed by ACCG as just a statement that, hey, this board supports still having some control over that. Um, so if the board so approves, if that's essentially all it does at this stage, and then they'll take that forward to the 2020 legislative session. Okay, any questions for the board or comments? Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, this is, um, I, I made a comment before, but just announced before, so it was Madam Guider, um, Madam Carth and I were at um, the ACC in East Cobb, um, I think it was a district meeting a couple weeks ago, and this topic came up. Um, and it, 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 Madam Guider actually led the invocation, but uh, for the group, might have been 60 people from the metro area, um, commissioners in different levels. But we're talking about some of the issues coming up in the legislative session, and it, it's one of those where this one was, was was important to pay attention to. And while I appreciate you know, the developers and the builders, and we appreciate your need to make money, uh, what we don't want is cookie cutters. But Douglas County Citizens need to hear this. What they're proposing is the power just to come and get rid of our local overlays and different things that we like, our character areas. And they just like, look, we want to come in, build our houses, and be gone. And that, I could not stand for. I'm like, because I respect District 4 being what it is, <coughs> like District 3 and District 1. And they should be allowed to say what, what they would like to have, perhaps in their, um, their in a, a specific master plan community, or if we pass an ordinance or something, or an overlay. I think that's important to have input. But to, but to allow this to go down like it's being proposed, it's like uh, we will not have say going forward. So it, it's like going forward, it just becomes commodity in a commodity in development. And so we'll, we'll come a time in 2020, we're going to come back to our citizens to make sure we light up the General Assembly. And we didn't talk about this in our last legislative session about what, what we need them to do. This one needs to be blocked at all costs. This one is not good. It's no different than that telecommunications thing that dropped on us. We'll put all this 5G wires around here. And it was, I, I told Senator Ice and, and, and Congressman Scott, like, what, what were y'all thinking? And it's like, Commissioner, we're not involved in this. Like, see, okay, they okie doke y'all. And they came down here and pretty much told us at the local level, we ain't got no choice. <coughs> so this one, we have a choice, and we're, we're, we're proactive on it. So we appreciate it, James, for you being on this one. But this one is that. Going forward, these communities, this thousand homes you got coming out in, in Mirror Lake, all these different communities that we're unfinished, that they're pretty much saying that you no longer get to say it with and Commissioner Mulcair fought so hard about Hardy Plank and all this, all the things that we've worked over the past ten years is about to go away with this one <coughs> simple thing if we're not paying attention. Um, you want to have input. You need a planning and zoning. They need to have different character areas, but do not give that type of power to the developers. And I appreciate they lobby, but not more than um, the power of the citizens. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to tab number eight, uh, memorandum of understanding with the Douglas County Economic Development Authority uh, legal department. Yes, ma'am. Under not, number eight, I think Mark's handling this. Just a continuation of the yeah, this is just a discussion on the uh, how to expand spend the funds, the 399000 that's left over from the 15, 16, 17, 18 uh, PCT portion of the hotel motel. Okay. And what you have in front of you is, based on the chairman's email um, a week or so ago, was to spend the money on the three pillars, African American history and culture, food, drink, and Georgia grown, and iconic Georgia. So the task list developed by the tourism department uh, shown here pretty much 33% for each one. So 133,000 for each one of the pillars. And also, Mark, you just uh, expound on the conversation we had with Tyler uh, 
from DCA uh, regarding how these this money should be spent for promotions and advertising. Yeah, it's pretty much promotions and advertising. It's only way TCT funds can be spent. They can't be spent on actual um, events or projects. It has to be um, promoting those promotions, not the actual events. Um, and if we need to spend the money as close as possible or have a plan to spend the money as close as possible to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. and then I believe also the Belden Authority was um, helped facilitate these dollars for us. Is that yeah, well, we currently have an MOU with the Development Authority. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much been put on hold for the last five months or so. Okay. Well, commissioners, the purpose of this today is just so we can, I guess, lift the sanctions. So we can move forward, so we can uh, press through for this money from 2015 to 2018. Uh, again, like I said, I had a conversation with DCA, <coughs> Tyler from DCA, just to get a better understanding of what these dollars could be spent on. You know, just reiterate <coughs> hammer in my mind that we can only spend it on advertising and promotion. So I said, okay, makes sense. And I said, that's all. He said, that's it. Um, of, of, of course, he did mention uh, such things as the uh, this is federal. Um, it's if we were audited by the federal government, he said, of course, it has to be on those items. And I said, okay, Chris, and I believe you're going to help facilitate this. Can you explain your part and what you're planning to do? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Come on, yeah. Please. Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so as, as a part of this, and to Madam Chair's point about ensuring that the dollars are spent accordingly, um, our, what, what we have done is worked, um, uh, Connolly Jordan and Associates handles all of our bookkeeping and accounting services. So we will be setting up a, a fund accounting to ensure that um, we can account for where or, or whom um, the dollars were spent with. Um, and then we'll maintain that list, or whatever list is approved uh, by you all as commissioners or, or directing the tourism department um, to, to administer. Uh, we will just, just make sure that we have a, a strong accounting for that. So we'll have a separate accounting, separate from our development authority account, accounting. Um, and it already, we already have their own account codes for that. We will continue uh, down that process um, Connolly Jordan and Associates will help us. It'll be kind of a fund accounting process. So each thing will have a line item, and then we will show how um, show that the funds were spent uh, accordingly. And we've been working well with with Colin and Ebony um, over the past couple of years, you know, in this process. But we understand, you know, that you've got pretty a, a large sum that you need to expend pretty pretty quickly. And so we just wanted to make sure that we had the accounting uh, set up for that. So they're working on that. They should be done um, within a, a week or so. And we'll just kind of backtrack for whatever things have already been put in motion to make sure they're accounted for. Any questions from the board? Okay. Commissioner Carthen. Sarah, <coughs> I'm looking at the proposal that we have. And it's different from the one that we had, I guess, two or three. Mm -hmm. Four months ago? Though. Yes, this was revised based on the chairman's email about two weeks ago. So can we bring up the tourism department? Mm -hmm. See Ebony? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And call me to your Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So can you all explain to us what we're looking at because I remember the email <coughs> that we received uh, I guess it was four or five months ago regarding the tourism um, budget of how you guys were going to spend that out the 399000 and this one is vastly different so can you go over that with us? Yes ma'am we were directed um, by Madam Chair after discussion I believe with the with the rest of the commissioners or you sent out a message to them that we were to go back and scrap what we had turned in before 
and uh, redo it based on the three pillars that we had not really touched on in the past, which were the African American history and culture, the food, <coughs> drink, and Georgia grown, and then iconic Georgia. So we took the 399,000, divided it into thirds, and came up with a plan of how to spend that money strictly on these three pillars. But in all, there are five pillars, correct? Right, but we had concentrated heavily on the other two pillars previously. Right. Um, we had pretty much put all of our marketing uh, efforts into the film trail and to the Naturally Douglas program, which included the um, outdoor recreation. Let's see, the other, the other pillars were film and music tourism, and then outdoor recreation and sports. So those were the two pillars that we had focused on almost exclusively, because these pillars were just laid out to us um, at the beginning of this year, basically just to categorize and tag content um, so more for tagging things and for the purpose of the state um, so that they could um, designate where, you know, different, different product went. So we had not been following um, a strict program of uh, following these pillars, and so we were directed to go in and uh, dedicate the rest of that money to the three pillars that had not really been... Um, focused on as heavily as the other two pillars. Got you. So I knew um, one of the reasons how this all got started was the um, the $25,000 that I had asked to come out of the proposed tourism budget item. I wanted that to go to um, African American history and culture. And knowing that our past Juneteenth had not been advertised, it had not been, you know, it was not well attended, it, it just, it was a shock to me that we did not promote that. And, yeah. At that point, we did not consider that a tourism event in that um, every community has them, just sort of like the taste of Douglasville and the Christmas events um, that we thought, well, these don't really have as much broad appeal to bring in outside people, but we have added that into um, going forward. I think that was one of one of the reasons why I wanted to highlight it. And then after having the, the meeting with you, um, I brought up the pillars, because I guess nobody in the tourism department knew about the pillars. No, we knew about the pillars that they just weren't, um, the pillar, the purpose of the pillars was not necessarily to base your whole everything that you did. It was a way for the state to just, and I have a, I have a letter from the state explaining what the pillars were for. So we were not focusing on the pillars until we were uh, instructed to. Directly. Yes. Got you. Um, the training that I actually went to was um, the economic development, and part of that was tourism. Right. And they really highlighted what tourism does as right. far as economic development, mm -hmm. which I truly had no clue. It was an right. eye opener to me how much you can drive into your economy based sure. on tourism mm -hmm. and how you direct your marketing and who you direct your marketing to. So right. once that was an eye opener to me, right. I wanted to make sure that. I had a conversation and try to get absolutely. Well, what we also what we had proposed originally was to take a fairly large chunk and have an uh, an outside tourism firm, and there are several that do research specifically. They'll come in um, and kind of letting them tell us um, where we should be, just as when we did the whole big. Um, outside the lines campaign before we put that together we went through a long strategic plan um, so we knew kind of exactly where we should be and um, that was sort of what we had been what we had been uh, waiting for so it wasn't that we were uh, ignoring the pillars it just was sort of we were going on what we knew that we had and that we were really strong in based on um, 
I mean, just our product. We knew we were good with the film trail, and we knew we were really great with the outdoor recreation. And with it being just me for the longest, and then got Ebony, we were kind of those two because those were easiest. And now that we have Ebony, and we've gone through some of this other stuff, we're we're prepared to um, spend this money on the other three pillars. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you. All right, we, 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 I, I made sure we're going to solve this today. All right, this, we're still dancing around what this is really about. Um, and and I, I appreciate the comments that were made um, about when Commissioner Carson comes in my office at 5.35 and she asks, Commissioner Robinson, is there any reason we can't use some of this money to help <coughs> promote businesses that are uh, minority businesses, women businesses in the community. I said, sure. This is the process. This is how you change something on the agenda, etc. Mm -hmm. The Board of Commissioners legislatively passed. The staff gets involved. And we get through all this, well, you can't do it that way. And it started with $25,000. Just simply to give some members in the community who want to do the very thing she talked about, which is help promote something that we did not have a competence in. That's not our core competence. And it was dismissed. And we went through a lot of four, three, four, five months of a lot of, as, as Commissioner Mulcahy would say, shenanigans. Because we were very clear on what we were trying to accomplish. Right? The pillars, I agree, were just more of a framework. So think about it, for the past three, four years, this is money that's in the aggregate. It does not talk about the money that was in your normal budget. So my understanding is that, take the pillars out of the way, the state evaluated Douglas County, and Douglas County, um, out of 13 metro county, is third from the bottom in effectiveness on use of tax dollars. Now I got a problem with that math that says that, okay, take the pillars out of the way. In other words, we talk about return on capital, return on assets, return on investment, return on equity, return on taxation. We've had, from that period of time, we had a normal budget. That's what they're evaluating us, our normal budget and how we spent money. That's like, okay. So we're saying, hey, why don't we focus in this area? That was, and I had no clue about the pillars. So I'm saying, why don't we concentrate on this? Because you know, there's a lot of professionals, a lot of good business here. That and again, at the end of the day, it's about, um, as I call, um, people in beds, right? This is about taking tax dollars, hotel, motel, to drive people here to spend overnight stays, right? And it's affinity. You're right. Black tourism is not important, and maybe South Georgia and some of populations is irrelevant. So it was not a dictate. But because of the non-success, and we're not the only county that was in this place of, you know, really are not using that hotel motel money like you, you should. And we raised it from 5% to 8% because of Fox Hall. This is that aggregate that began to build over time that we didn't spend. Pay attention. All right, so we're sitting up there with this big chest of money. And so here I'm, I'm, I'm being asked, and this is my issue. It's like, okay, now why, if we, we basically got a, I don't know, a third from the bottom, but that's probably about a D grade. Why am I going to put 400000 on poor performance? <clears throat> Why would I do that? Right? So my point was, there were people in the community, the other people who were willing to step up to help. My issue is one of those like, okay, <clears throat> this one thing I have against staff. Not only was the resistance in the meeting that I was not present here, but when my <coughs> finance committee meeting, after right before the full board of commissioners gave me an executive session, Commissioner Robinson, go look at this and come back and, and see what you can recommend. And staff comes with all, Mark comes in, county administrator comes in there, and they're dealing me my hand. And it was becoming so grievous. Then the county attorney decides to wait in, in an open work session about the chamber. And it got to a place where this ain't gonna play out like y'all think. You guys are really taking this to a level that was just like, no, I don't negotiate with myself, and I don't negotiate with staff. 
That's important to know. Staff is here for the pleasure of the full board, not the other way around. We were very clear on what we were trying to accomplish, which is, I don't have a problem with everybody eating, but if we deem that this group should be eligible to participate, it's, it's your responsibility to implement when I went back and looked at the code, what a county administrator and a county attorney says that they're supposed to be doing, it's the pleasure of the board. And I see all these games, and it was grieving me. It's like, okay, as I go into this board, I need to re it probably needs to be rethinking of, of, of why we're here. Right, seriously, like, you know what? I think we're becoming too common because it's like, y'all are not listening. Like, this was a priority. What, what, what did we talk about? Priorities? Uh, Derek Peacock, I appreciate you. It's about, right? It was very clear that this was a priority. And there was no support from staff on something that all it was, out of a $100 million budget, a new commission was trying to get something done for citizens. And y'all trying to redirect this money into the same staff's code, it's like y'all are not listening. And then you invalidated this new group saying we can't do it. But then you turn around and, and create a hand in which we're going to create a brand new hand outside of those guys. Now, why would I do that? Why didn't you just come up with a solution to help support the thing we're going to do? Because you're going to come right back to this full session. Right, now, where are we going now with this? That's my issue. Right? Now, I appreciate everything that everybody's doing. We appreciate that. We shouldn't be here. Right? We shouldn't be here. You have citizens that are looking at this that are saying, hey, what about us? The chamber has a role to play. Let them focus on the big egos. Chris, y'all doing a great job. I've had this <coughs> Y'all rock. But there's a group of people that says, hey, there's other things that are being not taken care of. What about us? And so now we're saying, no, let's knock this wall down and allow other people to participate. I have a problem with staff wants to re-erect stuff or make like, no, not, 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 like, not, now again, I'm just one vote. But when it comes across me, y'all come at me directly with a challenge, like, that's not going to play out very that, that, that's what it's like. Now, this is between me and the, 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 you two did something that was just so, after 10 years, it's like, really, guys? I had, I mean, my, my, my belief in what you guys were, and you played it in such a way, and you made such a mess and created such a strain in the perception with the chamber and those guys who do something that we, we work with, it was unnecessary. Conduct unbecoming over $25,000 to buy our new commission. For me to have to weigh in like this, it's like, there's no in-between, right? There's really no in-between. Like, and so I, 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 I prayed when I came in, and I'm gonna be sure, but I'm, I won't filibuster, but I've got this phone in the room. This is, I said, okay, now how, what am I gonna say? It's like, Stephen, give me the right words to say. So I'm not gonna miss on this. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It, it's not about the pillars, right? It, it, it doesn't really matter. We just want to promote, get people, highlight businesses that we hadn't really done, and keep them separate, right? Um, so, in, 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 so I know we're going to come back to this later when we vote and so let it go. But my, my point being is uh, what we read as a board of commissioners is to trust the development authority, Chris Pumphrey, to be the trustee of the money. Seeing that we know that nobody out there has a 501c6 that's already ready. Some have filed, but they haven't gotten them yet. So we have to use the broken system, the broken illegal system, that we're not the only one, but we've got to use the existing system. So then the question becomes, okay, but who is the staff member that executes that? There was a pause that says, well, let the existing staff prove that they can handle their existing budget, but to give them a bonus of 400 on top of that, Let's outsource that, right? Let's, let's, to that point, let's bring in a consultant, which we're going to hear from in a minute, to sort of like, no, I'm, I just can't see putting 400 in somebody's hands who went through such a resistance, just didn't want to hear us, right? We shouldn't have had to go through this. And all this, this, this shenanigans, all this public thing, just like, no, that, you, you, you can't now do it, throw a rock, and you're like, okay, my bad, I'm sorry. You can't rush somebody. And like, and then like, okay, well, it's his fault. Like, because I don't just work here. I don't, you know, I do live here. 
But I expect staff to show a, a certain amount of honor to say that, come on guys, y'all know me. Like, this, this was unnecessary. And this is playing out in, in a way that this wasn't good, right? So here we are, we're trying to get some stuff done. We're trying to make up for an error that was, okay, it is what it is, spend the 400. But spin it in a way that's thoughtful. We get to promotion, we get all that. But I have, right now, let staff continue to do what staff is working on. They got a 2020 budget, let them get their share, do what they got to do. But the 400 can be outsourced to somebody who's strategic. It's a one-time event. So the creation of an entity and all this stuff, like, okay, now what we're going through, what you, that's a lot of noise. Hire somebody to come in, one time, be done, it goes away. Right, the rest of this was sort of just, just mm. and again, we want to promote, I'm, I'm not finished. It's important that we want to acknowledge people in the community. I'm not going to sit here for four more years and maintain a system that says, no, what about these other people who want to contribute? I go to that gala every year, and it's the same people in there. And I'm like, you know how many people is outside this county that wants to participate? And it's up to us as elected officials to say, no, but I see you. I hear you. You should be given an opportunity. But what I don't do is negotiate with staff. I don't negotiate. For what? Right? I appreciate your input. I appreciate your technical input. That's important. But at some point, from a leadership perspective, it's like, okay, I appreciate all that input. But I want to go left. Right? Um, I'm just one vote. Um, but it's something that, because it came at me, I had to weigh in. So I'm giving this back to my peers to say, the course of action should be, you go with Chris Pumphrey as the trustee, as David, we know he's going to be that guy. Make sure the checks are cut, it's not the question. But as far as who actually oversees the work, I, I say we outsource that as opposed to um, existing tourism, let them stay focused. And perhaps, uh, Mark, since that person, and perhaps maybe a Tiffany reports you, that person can just be an oversight and coordinate all of this from our one-time perspective, but still having, seeing that person so busy, I still say go with the, 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 the obviously the, the PR firm. But this, let's, let's just say this is a message, this can never happen again. There is no in-between. Like, we had one time to ever do something like this. Right? This is one time. And it's like, that's it. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and yield the floor. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman. I would like to just piggyback on this, not necessarily something you said, but I want to speak in defense of, of at this point, I am have to claim my staff. They do a great job, and today I've just listened to so many comments regarding their lack of performance, and I think they do a great job. Uh, certainly they have been the, weed, the wind beneath my wings, and uh, they're human. And of course, people make mistakes, but of course, what I've learned, being the great leader that I am, and I'm going to claim that today, I'm not normally braggadocious, but I am today, uh, that you you got to move on. And, uh, and when I say that, you, you got to just say that things happen and mistakes are made, but you have to learn to let them go and move forward and not be punitive because you can't punish, I can't punish anybody because I said in our last meeting, revenge belongs to the Lord. Um, certainly, I'm so uh, disappointed that it didn't play out the way it should have played out. But of course, it sounds like we have a solution, and the solution is I've looked at trying to be as fair as possible those pillars that we did not address and to uh, divide this money up. And certainly, if we um, expect our economic development authority to govern this money, definitely, you know, we want to make sure that we have all our checks and balances in place and don't want to put them in a, in a very uh, vulnerable situation with um, having this, this matter outsourced. We have capable staff. Chris, I believe, can do this with uh, just detail from our tourism department. And we just probably, and, and the money is going to go out the door anyway for advertising and marketing. So it's not like we're not giving it to African American companies or food and drinks and Georgia Rome and iconic Georgia. So it's going to go out the door in a way for marketing and advertising. We just want to make sure it's managed. I made it very clear that I'm not going to jail or hell for anybody. We need to make sure that this money is tight and it's $3.99. And money don't excite me. It really don't. I, we really could just flush it 
out and just look at 2020 and keep moving, but I know there's a reason to utilize this. So I just really wanted to just, just, just I've been in our last couple of meetings, it's just the staff that's just been pounding. These are young men and women who get up every morning for us and, and make decisions and, and, and make this county run smoothly. And I don't want to take what they do lightly because I can't do it without them. I'll be honest, I can't do this alone. And I just, if, if our just commissioners would just take a different look at what they do. I'm here every day with them and I see what they do. They work very hard for this, for this county. It may not be exactly what we wanted every day, but I believe they work, wake up with good intentions to do the right thing. So I just, you know, it saddens my heart to just keep pounding on the staff because the more I pound them, I, what I've learned about the more you beat somebody down, the less they do for you, but if you lift them up, they'll do a great job. So with that being said, uh, Chris, uh, we've had discussions with the Development Authority, um, and, and our, we're, we're just not comfortable with outsourcing this, uh, this money. Uh, Talked to Ron Wilson and the, who else was on the phone call with us? So our person that handles our money is um, Mike, Stevens. Mike Stevens, because you know we have a board also, which is the Economic Development Board, so Chris can take it, but he still has to run it through our board as well. So that's what I'm saying, if we outsource it. So there's another layer. So we're still behind, but we, I'm looking at 133,000 going out the door for African-American um, advertising and promotion. So that somebody's gonna get this money either way it goes. So um, that's just my take and I'm gonna yield. Seem like you want to say something, Commissioner Carson. We need to move on. So. We have what uh, Mr. Wilson said, that the Tourism Board, um, Ebony and Colin have decided before us but we can also take a look at I like I just like I like what Colin said when she said you know look at how you can do a research how you can spend it and how you can effectively do it I like that type of thinking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you say outsource it that's basically what they're doing that's, there, there's a PR firm that can actually put our dollars to work and make it make sense Chris can't do that, although he can oversee it, he can't really do that. And they're already spending what they're spending, trying to meet all of our demands. Why not allow a PR firm to come in and help with that? that that's my take on it. I, I would prefer that, because it is a one-time spending. You do have to spend it quickly. That way we can <coughs> track our dollars, see what works and what doesn't work, because that is their specialty. So I, I, I would push back on what you just said, just for that reason alone that I yield. I, was, uh, I just have one comment. If we did outsource it, it's still going to be, I don't, I'm not sure if we're able to pay this company that we outsource these dollars to the money out of this 399. That's going to have to come out of the general fund. That's what I'm saying for. No, it, it, would, it would just be the same allocation of you know, for the research and the, it, it would be the same allocation. You wouldn't have to spend anything on the general fund to accomplish that. With all due respect, mm -hmm. we never received the proposal um, after we had the meeting with, that we were called um, with you, Chairman Carthen and uh, Ebony and, and your, uh, the PGN group. Yeah. And I, yeah. we never received a proposal because that's what we were waiting for so that we could go forward. As, as Commissioner Robinson said, we were instructed to go forth and we failed to do that. Again, with all due respect, we did not receive a clear directive because we never received that proposal. And I was on the IRN, so I acknowledge that. Thank you. It still is that 25,000. It is. It's still in here. It's still in here. Mm -hmm. it's in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other yeah. questions? Yeah, real quick. But the 25 can give one more time. So we'll conveniently give away, as y'all say, give. You can't give us anything. But okay, you got to give these guys $25,000, which is the same equivalent of uh, perhaps the, uh, we've got a, a, a PR firm that's going to present. Uh, but, but okay. You see how we're dancing around it? Wait a minute. You're going to give 25 over here for the very thing which is to promote, promote, that we had a, a concentrated focus. See, 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 follow the logic line. Like, if we just stayed there, we wouldn't have got here. And it's not a pounding. It's 
sometimes, but you're not listening. Right? It's, it's not pounding. And when the actions are from staff and membership, I appreciate you protect the staff. But every now and then they act like grown folks and they like, okay. Like there was no like and they know better. You didn't do that during Tom's administration. You definitely didn't do it. So it's like I've seen the difference. You can't tell me it's this and it's really that. Right? So I'm back to what this is really about. Which is I'm okay with the folks. But I'm, I'm okay with put all that to the side. Just let a firm and I'm, so you solve it by just giving it to a, a third party firm and let them do what they do. Chris oversees and they're just promotion. It's just what they do. And keep it simple and let staff focus on their 2020 budget. But the war four hundred thousand, I can't do that. I can't support it's effectiveness, it's return on taxation. It's funny how we get convenient where we hold some people super accountable, right? They, they, they hold a double standard and it's like, no, just no, 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 it's gonna be, let's just be consistent in how we look at performance. The state said that we're this, okay? Right, so this is, we're sidestepping something that's like, come on guys. We really wanted to give another, give others opportunity. We keep trying to keep it within the house and I'm like, no, what, what do you think the whole policy that we just passed was disadvantaged business enterprise? This is all consistent. It is truly consistent in what we're trying to get done. So what we say, it's like bumblebees, lions, and tigers and bears, right? This is, I was in a recent conversation. This one was like, you don't, it's not about winning. It's about advocating for citizens. <coughs> It's about citizens who said, okay, they at least heard us. We heard their cries, their pleas, how staff just, it was always like, y'all could have proactively went to them. We didn't have to instruct anything. It's convenient how you'll play me your hand. But you could have dealt that same hand with them. You could have called them. Y'all act like I'm new at this. Like, like, it's like, really? You could have went to them and said, hey, let's work this out. Just like you went to the chamber and worked it out and we accused ourselves. You did all this stuff. I'm like, why didn't you put the same energy over with that group? That's my problem. So I'm still coming back to, okay, we'll still come back right here. And so I'm like, no, I, I can't negotiate with myself. So I, again, I, I want my other peers to win. We, got, we do have to move on. We got to settle this. But this is one of those, like, I, I don't support um, um, giving it to the tourism group. Um, um, the vote. We just call it the vote. The vote at 400. I'm, I'm in support. Just I'll some more send it to the PR firm. Um, if my peers want to weigh in, we can. What do you guys think? Um, we do have somebody who wants to present. I don't know if we. we <coughs> I'm going to yield to. Them. They're ready to show what perhaps they can help do. I think there's some value there. It's not just about the spin. I think of sometimes to that very point. We don't even know. Because basically, we were evaluating. Not, not get it. We don't know what we don't know. There's no more than when we brought in uh, a court to show us some things that we haven't really uh, known before from a financial. It's like us bringing in a Dr. Henley from an entrepreneurship. Like every now and then you bring in an expert to sort of go like, no, I just wanna just, I got 400 and I ain't got time for you to learn. I gotta get this right. I don't have time for you to learn. You work on your current budget. So we're not taking away the budget. We're not feeling like, like keep going. Keep doing what you're doing, but this 400 is specialized. It's one time. Let's bring somebody here to show us how to really get it done. Learn from that. <clears throat> like our our, our, our our financial spreadsheet we got from Corbin, which is okay. Here's how you forecast. Here's how you model future. Here's how you see if that budget's off. Here's what the millage rate impact is going to be on that. Like let let's bring some experts here to do this. So I'm like, let the percentages go. Give it to a firm. Let them do what they do, and we move on. So I'm not trying to over constrain it now. It's like, this, this, you, you, you didn't focus on it, it's up to your point, it's okay. But I'm back to the point of giving somebody else an opportunity. That's what this was about. And trying to maintain it within the existing system. Now my peers are all coming to perhaps the same answer for different reasons. Mine was simply that um, another group should have been acknowledged. And that was important, so. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I'm sure a PR firm is not gonna do it for free. So is there a price out there for doing it? And are they fans of y'all? It sounds to me like y'all know these people that you want to give this contract to. So 
Could I hear hear the details about it, please? Okay, I can answer you. I don't okay. know. I don't know the PR firm. I don't know a PR firm, so I can answer was, you directly. Who was the firm they were talking about up there that they did not hear back from? <coughs> oh, you're talking about PGN, and that those are um, local, yeah, local constituents who help elevate black businesses, black tourism. That's it. So, but they're not here to, to give you a presentation or, or to even handle it. But do we know so. what a PR firm would charge to do what we're talking about? Yeah, well, we got somebody here that's from Do we have any idea? Is it 25000 50000 yeah. <laughs> um, I would just need to see a proposal. Right. Well, we'd have to put it out to bed. Do we have time to do it? We've got a month to do this. I thought what the chairman presented was fair. It was addressing the uh, different pillars that have not been addressed for the past three years. And um, I'm sure it's just going to be advertising, maybe spot places on TV. And the pillars and were just like rolled that. out in January, so they weren't in existence for the past three years. They just came out. Every time there's new um, staff and, and people at the state, every year their marketing strategies and things are, are different. Um, when I first came, it was the year of Georgia Film, and everything was poured into film. So we just got these pillars in January. And we'll probably have different. But do the focus. events have to happen by year end, or they just have to be we funded? By year we end? should have already spent the money by the end of this calendar year. So we've only got a month left. So we could this. have we could contract out okay. if we are not able to actually. By the time we spend find it. Mm -hmm. a PR group right. and things like that, they're gonna have about two weeks to spend four hundred thousand dollars. I thought what you came up with was fair, uh, and I don't think any of our staff was doing anything intentionally wrong, and I yield back. All right, Commissioner Mitchell the door? Y'all see him out there? He's gone. All right, he's gone. All right. Um, <coughs> I'd say let's, let's call it, we're, 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 well, right now it looks like you got two for two of Two against, right? We're not there, um, and so until we get resolved on this, is where it is. I mean, I, again, it's not going to budge, so it's going to have to be a definitive vote on where we go with this. What happens if we don't spend it on year end? Do we lose it? Yeah, we lose it. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. so we yeah. stand to lose our future uh, ability to collect hotel mental tax. Could I just have you come to the podium for one We have somebody here that's a PR for one child here then. What? Oh, you keep right saying right here. I'm oh, sure. Come on out. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying a PR. I'm trying to get the PR. Yeah, please. Hello. Hi. I was looking around and you keep saying a PR. I said, where are they? Congratulations on your 150 years. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, so my name is Tara Carino. I am with uh, Pioneer Digital Media and PR. And so we understand that there's a need for tourism and to help promote and put more people into the hotel uh, motels. So we are here to serve you, to optimize what you already have, not to do anything different. I have some campaign goals, and um, it's to deliver and develop special events across Douglas County optimize existing marketing dollars, establish extend overnight hotel stays, activate measurable ongoing tourism, identify strategic assets, engage key citizen groups, small businesses, leverage strategic partners, key existing sponsorships to optimize and match county tax dollars for campaigns. In other words, we are the public relations for Revlon and we have the authority to have sponsorships. So you guys have events, we sponsor, we match back dollars for the county. Now, my partner here, Ken, he's gonna go over some of the stuff as far as how we get the tourism, how we would do the advertising. Hi, I'm Ken James, and <clears throat> what we do is, we are not only a PR firm, but we do digital advertising. And we are a media company, so we distribute content across all platforms. Digital, um, social media, 
um, YouTube, anything that dealing with digital, and we do that scale. We can reach as many people as someone like millions of people per month on a monthly basis. Um, so we always pay attention to the end consumer because that's what their attention is. So we take our clients as creators videos and put in front of the attention. And that's how we get the word out. So if it's tourism for here, if it's for whatever my client is, um, that's how we present the information to the client at scale. And we have, um, as far as the products, we have products that's advanced, so that will give us the leverage to, to reach these people, pretty much. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, di di just in general, not, and this is something to the now that I understand. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, okay. So I'm new to this. Okay. I don't know about advertising. So. Tell me, have you done this before? Absolutely, yes. we do it every day. We have over 15 years of experience. And, and, and we have to say, all the attention is on cell phones. So what we do is that we market everything on the phones. That's why I say all devices, but majority is on the cell phones. So we get the ads for the clients. So you tell us right now it's, it's tourism. So you want people to come here, Douglas County, to get the hotels, uh, the motels, things like that. So what we do, we create these ads and then we, it's relevant because every ad goes in front of people that's looking to um, go on a tour or come visit or come see why this account is so important. So that's how we do it. And each ad goes in front of someone who's relevant. So it's not like a billboard or radio where it just blasts. No, it's very relevant and targeted. So you're intentional about who you're targeting. Very relevant. Very, very intentional. It, it's like, have you seen an ad and it wasn't relevant to you so you didn't click on it? So you said all the time. So what we do is that when we put ads in front of people, is either they went to a website where they were interested in, in taking a vacation or things like that. And with our products, it allows us, so for instance, you go to the Douglas County website for whatever reason, right? You leave that website, but they don't fill out a form, they don't click on anything. With the, with, with the products, when you go to some, another site, it follows you, the ad follows you to keep it relevant, keep it fresh in your mind. So that's how we're able to reach so many people and, and get them to respond at a higher rate than versus a radio or TV. And with something like this, you're only limited by your imagination. We can reach as many people at any time, anywhere, any demographic. And that's what's so brilliant about pairing it with P PR. You can do anything you want to, only limited by your imagination. So when you said that you can match the county <coughs> funds or the taxpayers funds, because essentially this is taxpayers money, this is not our money. Right. Mm -hmm. um, tell me more about that. Like, what do you mean? In other words, we have, um, like, again, I have the authority with Revlon because we are their PR firm to find events, to find different things in the, you know, different counties, different businesses to where if it aligns with their brand, they'll come in and they will give them money to be a part of whatever it is they're doing because it makes sense. It goes along with their brand, it aligns with their brand. They get brand awareness. It's a symbiotic relationship. The other people, they get the same thing. So it kind of works. And we have several different people that we can go to to do just that. Not just Revlon. Like a Coca-Cola bottling company is another one that I work with that would do something with the events that you guys are, are going to be doing next year. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Any other, do you have any questions for Commissioner Pattern? No, they just happen to be here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's important. They, they were invited to come and speak. No different than Corbin, no different than Dr. Henley. Um, this is something that I like, look, we need to bring somebody in here to give us some intelligence on something. No more than ABM, Amoresco, you name it. People come in order. I know, we're all done. Please don't cut me off. I don't want to hear it. Y'all are walking on thin ice. You're not getting this. I get it. You check her or I'm going to check her? I'm going to check her. Let's move on, y'all. Let's not do this. Okay. No, I'm not finished. This is my point. Okay. Mr. He has the floor. Yeah. Please finish. <coughs> There's no money that's going to these individuals in so far as oversight. 
they get paid their professional fees like anybody else, right? Like, now, when we start playing this friend thing and all this, like, don't make me like this. Convenient. Don't do that. We're trying to keep this right here in the fairway. Right. This must help someone. That's my point. Really. Right. You can't sit here and think, I will accept any marginalization. This is my third point. That was intentional. To the the, the do the very thing you just did. Right? And that's how staff has moved consistently with that spirit right there, and it will rear itself in a moment. Like, no, what now? Right. This, this is the point. This is what I'm saying. We're dancing around like, no, what, what now? Right. It's, 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 we can disagree. <coughs> we can be honorable. But, you know, you, you, you have to be careful. Right. Thank you. Yeah, you, you got to be. No, you talk out loud. Like you, you're so caught up in it. And, and this is my point. Right? And that go get off task. The point was, we're dissatisfied with the performance. In a different direction. It didn't have to come to this. And it's like, no, I'm not going to feel bad because I'm an African American male that's educated. I don't that's bad about being black. No, no, no. So my point then is that it's everything is cool, but it's well. Let me. This, this is my point. And, and so my point is that we're identifying people out of the community that wanted an opportunity. We can not go run from this. And so it didn't matter how you come back to simply, to her point, the two citizen group, the two citizens that are not here, were simply like, what about us? They're going to be acknowledged, whether I know them or not. Whether they're a best friend or they're not. Whether they're my son or not. That's important, right? And so it's one of those like, so it's like, no, there's not going to be a pivot. There won't be a, no, stay focused. I mean, that's important for us. And so there, there lies a, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Right? We try to give staff like direction, give other people consideration. All the subversion, all the redirects, it's like, okay, <coughs> give other people an opportunity. Just like give consideration. They've got to do their part. But to sit there and act like, like, and it's like all this, is like, okay, see, that's my point. And we'll see. Okay. Thank you. You know, my meetings is really going, they're just, they're going too long. We can stay on subject matters too long and we should move forward. Uh, we this, we're just going to take this up for a vote. Um, I just want to move it up. It will, call. we're going to call it tomorrow. And I just want to let you know, I'm very un uncomfortable with giving that amount of money to anybody, especially with a company that was formed July 29, 2019. They don't have enough experience and according to the Secretary of State's records, uh, this company has only been formed since 7 29 so I'm on okay. the company that just came through. Okay. I think I want to make related. sure she said no. she's been with Revlon for. It's, it's not related. Oh, they're not related. Okay. Let it go. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll leave it alone. We're just going to respect it and vote for it accordingly because we really need to move on. I don't want to lose this funding. So let's go on to the next item. The next item is. Uh, Nine, and it's the same thing as authorization to approve the structure of the proposal. Proposed 501C6, tentatively known as Douglas County Travel and Tourism Incorporation, and engage Malden and Jenkins to seek IRS designation upon legal creation and said entity and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. This is something we need uh, for this tourism department so we can move forward. And 501C6 is important. And that's something that we talked about last week, and we pulled it off the agenda, but we need to move forward, y'all. We have to have this. It's important. Tab number 10, authorization. We, we already talked about that. Tab number 11, authorization to approve an amendment to the Stitch Fix Co Lodges resolution and approval of the MOU regarding Douglas County tax savings incentive plan and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Chris Pumphrey. Yes. Good afternoon. Well, good afternoon. 
Good morning, last time I was up here. Um, so back in July, actually July 9th, um, we all, you all approved the resolution for Stitch Fix for their e-commerce fashion retail facility uh, in Lithia Springs. Um, when we discussed that project, we talked about uh, the commitments um, that were basically required of the company. They were going to create 981 jobs. Uh, they were moving into kind of moving into a building that was being developed by Prologis. And so the incentive program was basically on the building that Prologis built. And then the job commitment was on um, behalf of Stitch Fix. So it's a three-party agreement between um, the development authority, between um, Stitch Fix, and between Prologis. Whereas on the investment side, Prologis meets that because it's it's on the building that's being uh, completed that was completed this year. That's a, at forty three million dollars, and it's on the job side, which takes place over a five year span. Our uh, tax incentive um, <coughs> ordinance calls for a hundred percent compliance um, of our plans. Um, that means that they would have to meet all nine hundred eighty one jobs. And if they don't meet, they fail to meet 981 jobs, then they forfeit um, that, the, that year's uh, tax incentive program. We did pass a resolution back in 2014, um, and that resolution basically allowed for when companies have a REBA grant, and a REBA grant is a discretionary grant where competitive projects that are looking at multiple states, when they choose a final location, um, the state will then step in and offer what they call a discretionary grant. And when I say the state, that means the governor will say, yes, we agree um, to provide this grant for acquisition of equipment, development you know, of a site, clearing of a pad, improvements of a building, whatever they may be. When the state offers that grant, they have a performance requirement in place. And that performance requirement basically states that a company must achieve 80% of their commitment over a five-year span. Well, we have an ordinance that says you have to have 100% compliance over that. <coughs> and so what we agreed to was that we would adopt this, this and kind of brought everything back. And then once Ken and, and, and his team were able to look at it, they identified the discrepancies there. And so that's when we realized that we had that inadvertent inclusion and did not take into account the, um, the, the performance standards that are set forth by the state. So we've already approved them um, at the development authority, but we're bringing it back so that now at the commissioner level, we're approving the agreement based on the state standard, which has the 100% threshold, which also states that if you fail to meet that 80% threshold, then you basically have to pay back in amount the difference between, so let's use the example, use the example John gave me this morning. So if they only meet 79% of their commitment, then they have to pay back 21% of, of what, of the incentive that they were granted. So for the state grant, it would be 21% of, of the year in question. Of, of the year in question. But for the state grant, it's just one, it's one grant and they look at it at one time. So for us, we basically modify and look at the tax incentive plan per that year. So for that particular year, when they do their reporting, that comes to the tax abatement committee. And if they are at 75%, then they would have to pay back 75%, I'm sorry, 25% of the taxes that were basically abated for that particular year. Um, and so that's, that's the differences between the state standard and then what we have in our ordinance. And that's where we're just basically coming to make sure that all of the documents uh, mirror one another, the resolution passed at the county level, what was passed at the development authority level, um, and what's um, in the bond resolution that's validated. Um, and so we're just bringing all those pieces together. Like I mentioned, we discussed it, and I actually I went back to the minutes from that July 8th work session to make sure, and it was in there that we did discuss the 80% threshold, it's just that we just didn't include it in the documents. Okay. Any questions, Commissioner Yes, uh, Chris, mm -hmm. are you saying that because the state has the 80% <coughs> threshold, that we have to lower ours down to the states? Yeah, the states is won't change. So well, I yeah. know it, mm -hmm. but why do <coughs> they're going to meet the states' qualifications with their grant, 
But why do we have to lower ours till they have to have the 100% by five years? Well, it was as part of the resolution that, that the Board of Commissioners approved back in 2014 that we would adhere to that. So we approved that. I've got it, got it here. So that was a resolution we approved. Um, and that was to, to keep reporting and all the requirements on the same So page. you're saying we have an ordinance already on file that says we have to mirror the state? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I don't know if this is. Yeah, I think it's sl slightly different. Resolution 14078. Right. Yep. The, the, your economic incentive plan that the development authority follows includes dialogue about when the state's involved in the, in the plan. The inconsistency in that economic plan is that it calls for 100% clawback, where the state threshold for this kind of project, if it gets to state grant, is a lesser number. So, quick, what Chris has said is absolutely correct and I just told him before we just unilaterally change the clawback I wanted him to state that on the record but everything he said is correct now you asked the question do we have to approve it and the answer is that it's been addressed in the summer resolution but the actual documents that we reviewed had the 100% clawback so there's an inconsistency so when I spoke to Joe Fowler and Chris and John Gornell who's here from Atlanta I said it would be, I w I'd like y'all to come back, let's put it on the record so we get it exactly right, instead of sign something that's different than what actually the, the version that came through for review. So you're saying by our own ordinance, or we have an ordinance that says we will mirror a state grant. Well, I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> call it an ordinance. You have an economic incentive policy. Policy. You can change it as you wish. You've, de you've deviated from it before on length and term sometimes. And this is one that when it was presented originally, was presented just as Chris outlined it. But the documents we reviewed were consistent with the 100% callback of the year in question. When the documents came up for signature, we caught that these now have changed that. And I want to make sure the board understood that that callback is different. We wouldn't, didn't want three years from now, y'all say, well, wait a second, those are not consistent. Uh, well, I, I just didn't understand why, you know, Stitch Fix and their agreement with the state of Georgia is one thing. Their agreement with us, to me, is a separate thing. Right. It is. So but why, why do we have to lower? I'll explain it, and Chris, you jump in. <laughs> Chris is going after these kind of deals in development authority where the state's got somebody coming in and they're trying to locate them. So Chris would probably take it from there. Chris, you want to take it from did there? Did the state bring in Stitch Fix? Yes, and, and what, what I will say is, is it is it is extremely challenging for any company to meet 100% compliance. Um, and that's anywhere in the state, in any, any state. If someone says they're going to create 100 But that's our ordinance. I mean, that's, I mean, that's our... In, in, indeed, and, that, and, and, and it's something that, that we've discussed in the tax abatement committee that I, I recommend we modify because it is very difficult um, to to attain that. So within we say, five years, we can raise the. Yeah. So our, our basic standard says that within 24 months you have to meet that requirement. Now we we modify that based on the ramp up plan of a company. So Stitch Fix ramp up plan is five years. Some companies' rental plans might be three years, um, but 24 months, if someone says they're going to create a thousand jobs, it's pretty difficult to create a thousand jobs in 24 months. So you might go with a much more conservative approach um, you know, in that. But what I would say is, is if you just look at projects across the board, it's, it's very challenging to, to hit 100%. Um, such that if someone says they're going to create 500 jobs and they only create 495, are we going to penalize them for the five jobs, or are we going to be grateful for the four ninety five? Is it just the job cap? It's, it's not the it's capital job. investment. It's yeah, it, it 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 becomes a a a blend of the two, of the um, the investment and the jobs. So they only have to um, invest eighty uh, percent by year five. Well, the, well, on this particular project, on this the building is done, and the project is only on the building, so it's not on their equipment. It's on the, yeah, their equipment is okay. fully taxable. Okay. Yeah. There's one other issue, too, that we've adjusted the spend from 
50 something million to 43. 43. <coughs> but I understand they've already spent the 43. Yeah, right? 43 so the spent. money's already been invested here. Yeah. Okay. So the other modification is resolution is the original approximated 50 something million. The actual spend's 43 million and some change. And so you are agreeing to that mm -hmm. change number. But they've already spent the money, is what I understand. One of the topics that we've talked about in the uh, abatement committee is being consistent we want something that works for everybody yeah. and and I don't like to deviate uh, but you're saying it's kind of necessary when they were brought in by the state of Georgia and um, yeah. I, even though ours is different we have to um, just about have to mirror it well, I, I, Chris, let me add, if I can, I, I ran this by Roger Murray. Roger Murray said we won't be competitive if we don't mm -hmm. agree to these kind of plans. That if the state provide. brings it in. Well, I, I, would say, I would say in general. In, in, in general, we're not competitive. And, and, and one of the reasons we engage John Grinnell, so John uh, represents the City Development Authority, and John represents authorities and projects all across, across the state of Georgia. Um, it's very, very successful, and you know, John's going to hate me for doing this, but John was just given the Rick Wiley Award at our state association last month, <laughs> which is the highest honor that our state association should give, okay, gives to, to any individual, and it really just speaks to his, his breadth and depth of this. He's been doing um, uh, a bond, bond counsel, bond attorney for 30, 30 years now, working these types of projects, so he understands the competitive nature. In the city, or, the city ordinance, it allows for the 80%. Uh, threshold, even though we use the same City points, yeah. This, okay. we, even though we use the same points system, they allow for the eighty percent threshold. Um, we, however, do not. Um, and I, and I, like I said, I'm, I know I mentioned it when we had when we brought this up about modifying that um, to be more competitive, um, because like I said, it is very difficult and challenging. Well, what for is any this going to do with the ones that we already have? They will under that. Yeah, they, they grandfathered they, under that. No, they will. They will stay at their. Because we're going back and building some of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they they will stay at whatever their agreement states. Uh, this particular agreement uh, states the eighty percent, and it's to your point because the state brings them in. No, we don't have to change, but we did adopt a resolution that said we would. So right. we we modified our policy for it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Back. All right. Thank you. We'll move on. Next item. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item. No. <coughs> the next item is number 12, authorization to approve five proposed Douglas County Board of Health Center Environmental Health Services fees effective January 1st, 2020. Chris uh, Hutchison is here from um, the Center of the Environmental Health. How are you? Good morning. Can okay, you just kind of tell the Board of Commissioners what you're planning to do? Please. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, I'm here to present uh, five proposed environmental health service fees, and environmental health service fees are unique in uh, the realm of public health because they do require two steps to be authorized. They require both the Board of Health's approval and the Board of Commissioners' approval, and we received the Douglas County Board of Health's approval back in September, so this is the next step in that journey to get the fees approved. Um, I'll just go through these very briefly, if you like. Um, yes. Okay. Um, the first uh, two fees are related to pop-up food service establishments, and this was something that was added to our rules and regulations last year. And this is um, an arrangement where a workplace and a food service vendor are coordinated through a third party to provide food to the people that work in that workplace. And our obligation in that situation is to both assess the site to make sure they're suitable for a food service operation and to assess the vendor to make sure they have the uh, processes and equipment in place to safely serve food. And these are one-time fees that are, we assess them um, basically when the operation begins and until something changes with it, they're not assessed uh, at any further date. Um, the next fee, the mobile food unit base of operations, um, this is a fee, we're trying to make an adjustment to the fee that we normally charge for a base of operations for a mobile food service if it does involve a restaurant that we're already dealing with. Since we already have an existing relationship with them, we're trying to reduce that fee because it does seem a little excessive for uh, um, what they're being asked to pay now, which is currently around $250 since it reduced it to uh, $95. Um, the next fee is an owner requested inspection fee and this is a fee that comes up periodically when a restaurant 
typically they get a score that they're not happy with and they don't really want to wait until their next routine inspection to try and do better. Um, it's not a mandated service, uh, but we are trying to adjust the fee so that it is proportional to the complexity of the establishment that's being inspected by making it two thirds of their annual inspection fee for that inspection. And then finally, the body art exam fee. Uh, later on in 2020, the state will be taking over the licensing of body artists, and these are people that do tattoos and piercings. And since uh, they will be taking it over, the exam will be administered at the local level, at the uh, local health department. And this is already an arrangement we have with other programs like uh, septic contractors, septic pumpers, and just adjusting this fee to fifty dollars is to more or less bring it in line with what is charged for all of the other state uh, exam fees that are charged by our office. And uh, I guess at this point, if there are any questions? I okay, any questions from the board? I think you you've met with all, us all yes. separately and individually, so thank you. All right, thank you. Know, you. A, we appreciate your proposal. <coughs> and Chris, just to pick it back off what you just said, a lot of these are new. That's never been. Um, the first three fees are new yeah, and yeah, then the last active, two were adjusted. Yeah, things that we should have addressed in the past that we hadn't cap captured. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll move on to tab number 13, authorization to deny all proposals for solid waste facility management for Douglas County. Uh, there you go. Director. Good afternoon. Madam right. Chair, uh, Commissioners, staff. We've got some handouts for uh, this is just the outline of what Murray Griffin, a uh, gentleman who just walked up there, his suggestions. Um, so to make this, you know, kind of quick, what we're looking at is a little background. All right, so uh, earlier this year, the county issued RFP. Um, we reviewed the proposal submitted by the four different companies on future disposal options. And based on the proposals, we found none of them to be acceptable. Um, we've enlisted uh, the help of two different private consultants. And Murray Griffin is here today with ACC, which is one of them. And he can explain some things in better detail for you if you have questions. But also just want to keep in mind, one of the big things that's, that has changed the scenario here is when we started this process, we had five years life expectancy in Douglas County landfill. And based on y'all's leadership and the decisions to raise the rates to the surrounding counties, we now have 16. So my point is we don't have to make a decision right now. And I think it'd be us getting ahead of ourselves if we, if we did. So for that reason alone, we don't need any of these proposals. With okay. Any questions? I'll hand it over to Murray. <coughs> Just to crack, we we actually the RFPs were received in December of last year. So it's been a year ago that we got the RFPs. There were about ten firms that came to the pre-proposal meeting. Four ended up submitting, and there's been some development since then. One of the four firms that submitted is actually in the process of merging uh, with waste management. Advanced disposal is merging with waste management. And that in itself is going to change some of the dynamics of the waste uh, infrastructure around you all uh, because it's very likely that uh, waste management will be required to sell off some of their assets. I don't know which ones. It won't know probably to the middle of the year. But having the additional time to make a decision and look at things, just continue operations as they are, uh, is basically what our recommendation is to you at this time. I think it was interesting to note that from the RFPs, three of the four companies, the primary recommendation would be to put a transfer station at the landfill that would handle all of your waste. 20 years ago, you decided to privatize uh, your MSW waste and you built the transfer station you've got out there and it's been going to a private landfill for those 20 years. In the future, all of your waste, we believe, will be going uh, through a transfer station uh, to private landfills, private Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yes. Yeah. So, so we don't have to do anything. I mean, we yeah. You saying from because of our, it's the life. So we went from we went from a life expectancy <laughs> of five, five years for years. until we reach our maximum capacity, and we have to change uh, to sixteen and a half. 
based on us just matching the rates of the surrounding counties. Okay. We were at 30 now, they were at $60 a ton, now we're at 60. Yeah. And doing that, we've cut down the amount of trash by two thirds mm -hmm. that comes into our landfill. So we have bought ourselves time mm -hmm. to, to see what's gonna happen with this market, with this new merger, mm -hmm. how it's gonna change and affect things. And it was just, there's no decision to make right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I came in tail end of this, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty fast on this one. So, all right, let's go back to when we first did the policy. We started, and this is where I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to the accuracy of the numbers. Now, when we did that policy consideration and we made that change, we went from maybe buying our, only having the sky is falling, we only got three years. Did a policy shift and go to five years. And it, it keeps becoming this moving target. Right, so I come back to those advisors, those mm -hmm. consultants, like, no, what's the number though? Why are we shifting right now? Again, we've got record that tells all these um, feedback from our experts, right? We, we all, based on the recommendation, we did the RQ, right? And so, again, back to paying fees, paying consultants, Right? Paying the same old system. Right? I'm like, okay. Uh-huh. So then I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, so, okay, we got all types of stuff out there. I don't know, tires, whatever y'all put out there and stuff. And I'm like, uh-huh. So I'm going back to long-term capital plan, which is, okay, at some point, which is what got into this whole conversation, which is, if we have a need for it, what are we doing to plan? So to say, don't do nothing, it buys us time. That Well, that's, we appreciate that, but that my responsibility is to sort of sit here and say, well, guys, we need a plan for this. Don't kick this down the curve and to my future. Did we not consider this? Did we not know? Did we not have the intelligence to be able to forecast and say, look, whether it's three years, five years, or 16 years, what are we doing to, pre to prepare for that? That's our conversation, have these tough, multi-million dollar conversations, right? So what is the plan to help us deal with that? Now we're sitting back, now we could have had these guys come in and look at our, our holistic approach and okay, they're going through merge stuff, but my understanding is that we didn't do right the RQ very well, right? I mean, based on responses, it was somewhat vague, right? I don't know how we got there, but okay. And part of our conversation was to bring in maybe an expert to help us better write the RQ. It just came out of our procurement. We're like, well, what happened? Right, so I'm hearing this, this colorful narrative. It's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. And this inconsistency in the stories we're told, and we'll call them stories, because from each meeting, it keeps shifting. It keeps shifting. And it's always this public storyline. It's like, now I wish we were at the bed level, man. Did not complain, okay, right? I gotta sit here and discern through this stuff like, no, y'all gotta be a little bit more accurate on this, right? I understand the system, but I, I, I was hoping to hear um, at least a go forward. If you're advising me, don't tell me to do something that you know inevitable I've gotta have the operation. What is the plan that I'm paying you as a consultant to help us do with that? Now you can't answer that right now, it's okay. I'm making a point, right? We want to talk about advisors and those people who are helping us. And okay, <clears throat> I was able to get right back in this conversation with, with the swiftness. Uh huh. All right, I appreciate it. You guys did you did good. Appreciate the report out to to the broader sense. It's not your issue. I yield. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. All right, next we'll move on to tab number 14, authorization to purchase three message boards for the Boundary Waters Aquatic Center at a total cost of $6,270 to be funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds allocated for equipment and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, we were approached by our recreation swim team down at Boundary Waters, the uh, Stingrays. They have been the recreation swim team there ever since the facility was open. <coughs> and uh, they requested these message boards uh, so they can post records, times, events, swim meets that are coming up, and kind of give them a sense of having a home pool. 
which they've never had before. So uh, it comes as a recommendation from the Recreation Oversight Committee to purchase the boards. Okay. Any questions? Um, Commissioner Carpenter. I just one thing I just wanted to highlight was that um, the importance of this because the swim team is using boundary waters and boundary waters is a beautiful facility and we are getting ready to add to it to the recreation. To me this just helps to boost that <coughs> notoriety for our county that we're serious about the quality of life that we bring for our constituents. So this just adds to this. So this is one of the reasons why the parks and rec board just highly wanted this to, to take place. So I hope uh, we can all agree that this is something that's needed. It may, it may seem small, but it, it is actually <coughs> a great benefit to the county and to the Parks and Rec. Well, it seems big to me, yeah. um, because number one, I'm surprised <coughs> we didn't have a, something to keep the time they yes, so this We have good. a timing system, so they have all the records, and uh, but they just had no way to, uh, to display them. Yeah, that would be so nice. This gives the, it not only helps them as having a home court, but it gives the kids an opportunity to look up and say, yeah, that's my record. That's right. You know? right. Yeah, and, 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 and the parents. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> makes sense. Anything else? All right, thank you. Yes, now sir. move on to the next item, tab number 15, authorization to amend the budget and accept funds bill to the municipalities of Douglasville and Villa Ricker and insert funds into the 2019 budget for the Board of Elections and registration in the amount, uh, in the total amount of $15,704, uh, <coughs> Director Hallman. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, we do not budget um, for the revenue that, um, I think one of these was an actual um, unanticipated election. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, he had, a, um, the elections and registration department had uh, expenses that needed to be um, recouped from both the city of Villarica and Douglasville. So we filled them, they paid, and now we're just putting the money back in this budget. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory money from the board. We'll move on to the next item, um, authorization to approve a contract with Integrity uh, Lawn Care for Landscaping Services in the amount of $13,964 for the Dog River Public Library, Douglas County Public Library, and Lithia Springs Public Library, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Lindy Moore, you want to take this, Mark? Um, should be either Lindy or Bill. Um, I don't have any attachments on the agenda, so I can't I can't speak on this one. They would have had to obtain quotes, and there's no quotes attached, so I don't have the information. We'll just <coughs> move on to the next one and see if we can get somebody get deal for me. Uh, Commissioner Robson. Yeah, it's, it's just, we had this situation before um, where. You, you can't ask us to consider anything without the paperwork. It should be taken off the agenda. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. You, you okay. cannot, okay. if you give a long time, uh -huh. so we will spot somebody a $13,000 contract. Now, have I not said nothing? Everybody was supposed to just pause it, but nobody already took a position to say, this shouldn't even been on the agenda. Right? Mm -hmm. 13000 is not a lot of money, but that means somebody local will be getting that. And I, and I support it. I'm just saying. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on and, and uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, ask the uh, <coughs> gentleman to go and get bill for me. And then, of course, if there's no paperwork, we'll just we'll take it off. Tab number 17 is authorization to approve an MOU with Happy Tails Pet Therapy to provide qualified teams for annual, I mean, animal assisted activity reading uh, with the pet program at the Lithia Springs Public Library and authorized chairman to sign all related documents. Lindy Moore again, so she's not here. Mark, you want to take it or you want me to just, you just no. shouldn't have Same it? Thing. Okay. All right. We'll move on to tab number 18, authorization to approve a contract with <coughs> Motorola solutions for body cameras, cloud storage for $154,288 for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending legal review. Uh, Major Holmes. Yeah, that one, that's pretty self-explanatory also. Uh, just, that's what it's going to cost for the cloud storage and set up the fee. Okay, any questions? There are additional costs to this, but um, we plan on paying those with splice. 
for the actual radio mics um, is $172,672 and then accessories and spare batteries uh, $71,364 but all that will be included in the in the Motorola contract. Okay. Any questions about your question? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, so uh, storage. And this is something that came online. Um, I remember when we were going through the conversation having body cameras um, for the sheriff. And the past sheriff was, didn't want to do it, but we wound up, uh, Commissioner Mitch and I advocated and said, well, we won't put it in the budget anyway. And we couldn't, of course, make him do it because he's constitutional. But okay. Um, obviously, that very next January, there was a death, and he said, okay, I guess I need to do this. But out of that conversation came this whole notion of how are we going to store um, all of this, you know, the costs associated with this. So here's my question, which is, Mark, you're using this floss to a certain extent. We're floating funds. This is what I'm, I'm concerned about, the budget. We keep um, taking from this and moving into here. It's, 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 it's in support, don't get me wrong. But it's, um, it's a cost that needs to have a line item. Um, have we talked to how big can this get in light of all of our storage, in light of all the things the courts are doing, in light of everything that is like unique storage? And I don't know nothing about no cloud. I know I've got people in here that are good at that. But is that something that we put over at Switch or somebody? Do we have a partner? I mean, what are y'all doing to sort of get ahead of this? Because we're sort of hedging the cost of the sort of going to build. I'm like, come on, guys. It's <coughs> not. So I, you, may, you don't have to have the answer, Mark, on that one. It was just more of a, how do we, how do we get our minds around the long-term cost of everything? And Madam Chair, maybe talk to one of our partners that that's what they do now. Um, is, is there a way we can um, get some type of discount benefit? I don't know. I'm just, because just, I'm hearing these one-off moments, and it's not going to go away like healthcare. That, that, that thing will keep growing <laughs> exponentially. Um, the need to store stuff. So Mark, can you find out? We'll yeah, we've had discussions about it, so yeah. the rush has been working on it. Um, you just don't have okay. it. I can take it offline then. If y'all yes. work through it, then I can do it that way. All right, we'll take it offline. Okay. I'll start from offline. And then, Clark, if you can remove uh, tab number 16 and 17 for tomorrow, just so we have it because the um, bill is not here. Okay, we'll move on to tab number 19. <coughs> tab number 19, authorization to renew an agreement with Correct Health Douglas LLC for health services for inmates January 20. Uh, 20 through December 31st, 2020, and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents pending legal review. Major Holmes, I believe this is just a routine. It is just a renewal of our, of our contract, correct, Cal, for another year. Sure, okay. very satisfied with their their uh, services with us. Okay. Tab number 20, authorization to renew a contract with the Relias LLC for online training courses for the sheriff's office and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Been in legal review. Major Holmes again. This was a contract that has been going on for a few years. As a matter of fact, it was initially done in the previous administration. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe uh, this year will be the last year that we're in this contract. So it's just a renewal. It is a slight increase. It's going up about, looks like about $6,000. Okay. And you said it's the last year, so that means we will... Yeah, we, we were looking to, to go to another option. Um, we're kind of locked in, so... Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Holmes. We'll move on to tab number 20. Madam Chair, can I just yes. uh, point out one thing on 20, if I can? Yes. Uh, I got an email from Dr. <coughs> Connor. There's a potential, if there's a way out for this one-year renewal, Mm -hmm. If it's, if the buyout of that one year renewal can be discounted in the group they want to go to, that the sheriff's department wants to consider that. Mm -hmm. But I think we've already rolled over, so they're in negotiations. I just wanted y'all to have a heads up because they may come back and request another group that discounts as to offset the cost of the buyout of the other deal. But they understand that it has rolled over and. I've had those discussions, and Bobby, I just got to email. The reason why I bring it up, I just got an email earlier this morning from Chief Connor. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the comments? We're going to move on to tab number 21. Authorization to approve a 2020 contract with the collaborative firm for $100,000 for marketing and promotional services for Connect Douglas to be paid out of the capital transportation fund and authorize the chairman to sign all the documents. Um, 
Director Watson. Yes, ma'am. We've been working with the collaborative firm for about two years. Uh, they've been with us from almost the very beginning of the Connect Douglas process from the time we were holding meetings to let the public know what we were intending on doing with the, the bus service uh, through the launch and now through the, the comprehensive marketing and advertising campaign uh, that we're un underway with. Uh, we built up a lot of momentum with what we're doing uh, thanks to the collaborative firm and, and their working with us. Uh, we want to continue that momentum in 2020 uh, by contracting with them again. We're proposing a $100,000 contract to be paid out of the Comprehensive Transportation Fund. This does come as a recommendation from the Transportation Committee. Uh, we have Michael Hightower and Danielle Cherry who are here from the uh, the collaborative firm. Uh, Mr. Hightower, do you have anything you would like to, to no, add? No, let's ask the questions. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Gunn. Okay. Uh, Gary, you said it comes out of the Comprehensive Transportation Fund. The unassigned balance, are the, is it funds that you've collected through the FTA? No, this is, this is what w remains in the, the, the fund. But this, none of this is paid for with, with grant money. So, um, I don't know what our balance was. It seems like it was 270 something thousand. Jennifer, do you remember the unassigned amount? So, we're taking 100,000 out of that. Yes, ma'am. So, we only have $176,000 left in there. So, um, so, this was a budgeted <coughs> item for you. No, ma'am. Um, I, I submitted a budget improvement request uh, for actually for a new employee to where we could do all of our marketing and advertising um, in-house. And I presented that uh, during my budget hearing earlier uh, this fall. What I told uh, to the county administrator and Madam Chair uh, during that was that uh, I didn't. It didn't really matter to me whether we had a, went with in house with it or continued with the collaborative firm who have done great work for us. But one, we needed one or the other. And as the, the conversations uh, continued, that was the direction uh, that we went in: is to continue with the collaborative firm. Well, um, what was the price of the other way? <laughs> What was the cost of the other way? Uh, with, with, with the salary and the benefits, it was about $100,000. It was 100000 Yes, ma'am. But it, the, the job of the collaborative fund firm is to promote the, the uh, Connect Douglas. Is, is that what? Pr promote, advertise, market, uh, <coughs> lead us in, in public meetings. We're continuing to have a lot of meetings uh, out with in the, in the community, and, and they're our lead on those. They pretty much handle all of that for us. Okay, do you think you'll ever get to the point where we don't have to have a consultant do this, our PR uh, group do this, but we do it in-house? <clears throat> I, I think long run, it would be a benefit to the county to have this in-house. Uh, that may not be the direction to go right now, but yes, ma'am, I do believe long term that's the way we need to go. I know you need a, a PR person to, to keep calling something new and everything. But uh, now the films that we saw today was that uh, out of this their funds, or was it out of our funds? General well, funds? there there was no cost in in producing the the film because. Uh, T.J. Jaglinski did it out of the Rick Martin's department, but now the, the initial idea came from one within us. Uh, our staff, Madam Chair, had some thoughts on it, uh, and, and we directed the collaborative firm to lead these efforts for us, and, and they sort of served as sort of the liaison between us and, and uh, Rick Martin's staff and get them to well, have y'all considered putting spots, <coughs> advertising spots? Um, I know the 
uh, our attorney here, he has great spots on his, <laughs> uh, about his uh, firm mm -hmm. on TV. Yeah, we're doing that now. Yeah. Oh, they have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't seen them. Yes, so. ma'am. Uh, we're doing them now. They'll last yeah. through the middle of January. Now, uh, does that come out of your budget? Does it yes, ma'am. No, that comes out of ours. So what comes out of their budget? Well, that's, <clears throat> they're, they're direct, they're, we're paying them on, on a per month basis for their activities. And as far as producing those spots, uh, again, they, they did a lot of the legwork for us. We, we came up with the idea and they took that idea and ran, yeah. ran with it. Okay, but you're, you're saying that the person, the staff person that you were considering is going to cost just as much yes, as uh, a PR firm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, I go back. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're the next one too. 2020. Uh, I'm sorry, 22. <coughs> Authorization to offer free rides to the public on Connect Douglas fixed route paratransit and flex services from December 4th, 2019 through January 1st, 2020. Director Watson. Yes, ma'am. There, there are a couple of reasons that we want to do that. One is to say thank you uh, to the core of riders that we're developing uh, with our Connect Douglas services. Um, since our launch on June the 20th uh, through the end of November, we, we've had 11,971 boardings. So, so we are developing a, a good core of, of everyday riders who are depending on us to get them to work, school, doctor appointments and things like that. So we want to say thank you to them. And also we want to use this as an opportunity to in encourage people who haven't used their service before uh, to maybe ride and see that it works for them and they'll be, become regular riders for us. Um, a couple of other things about this. Uh, again, this does come as a recommendation from the Transportation Committee. And, and as far as uh, fares and, and what we would not collect if we allow free rides for this month. Uh, we're looking at between three thousand and five thousand okay. dollars. Any questions from the board? Or? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Yeah. Real quick, and I and just because these are are both related. Um, you know, I, I acknowledge the importance of, of professionals in PR sometimes just to help accelerate the growth. Um, um, no more than um, my son who coaches the team and you bring in senior people, um, you bring in people who have done it before. Um, sometimes you're just trying to get up a curve. Uh, we had a history here in having a, a, a system in which we recognized that we didn't do a very good job of, of educating the public about our existing um, services. We had four or five, and that was what, what we, get, we did a survey that says 80% of people didn't even know that we did what we did, let alone rolling out this new, obviously, service. So the, 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 the value that the collaborative had brought us is something that, okay, we just, we, we, we all agree, we want to get this right, right? We, we got to do better. It's okay to judge yourselves and do better. Okay, to bring in expert, it's great. And this is one thing that always challenges with government that like sometimes we get so in our, we can do it, we can do it. And it's like, yeah, but you in the private sector, man, y'all get throttled. Like, no, it's it's not, no. And, 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 it, and I'm looking at it from the citizens' view. This says, and they look at me as leader, like, well, what's up with this? And we reason and we rationalize performance. Now, this Gary's done a great job and. McCarthy <coughs> acknowledged you last time. So that's not my point. The importance is making sure that you have, again, and it's not to say you bring consultants in forever. I mean, sometimes some of our contracts are out there for a long time. People have 10 years for this and auditors and different things, and we let them ride. I don't think this is the case. Um, and I want to acknowledge that um, when we went through the budget process and um, county administrators stated that it would not be anything but connect Douglas in 2020. Okay. And again, that budget process was just boom, one day. <laughs> you gotta know what you're looking at. And so after the day after you had the process like, okay, now wait a minute now. We came out of the transportation committee, we've already approved a marketing plan. 
we've already made the recommendation two meetings ago to the full board that was a fourth time such as this. So where are we at with education? Well, it didn't make the budget. It's like, but, but, but wasn't it important? Yes. It was like, well, Gary asked for in-house, but his boss, his boss's boss, didn't put in the budget. But yet, education is important for the system. So I'm looking at this like, okay, this will play out. Right? So it's like, okay, so y'all, you, you cannot start a system and then stop like, okay, don't do this. Don't like, so there had to be a recalibration. So I want to give acknowledgement that there was, right? But then it became a matter of priority. Right? So in other words, like, well, it's one way, one way, one other way. Now, I had no idea that that was advocated. That's not my job to get into the budget. I show up every now and then. But for whatever reason, your in-house did not make it through. I want to acknowledge that. Right? Well, but I know that education was going to go forward. Right? So the question was, I was called and said, OK, so are we going to get the money? We've got this like, y'all got to figure this out. So it was the capital transportation fund. So OK, yeah, me and Chris Smoker have been like, OK, when y'all going to replace this? Can't get convenient now all of a sudden at the end. It's just like, hmm, okay. We've been telling you that for three years. Uh-huh. So, yeah, it's coming to the end. But so, okay, and the remaining amount, so it's like, okay, well, there was some hedging in my uh, transportation committee. Like, this is, okay, well, it's two something. What's the number? And I had to force, like, okay, so what's the number? From finance, transportation, well, how much we got left, to your point? Good, excellent question. How much we got left? So, well, how much is this going to cost? 100 grand? Two, okay, that was quick math. Like, okay, so what's the issue? Right? So, it's, 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 I, I got to state, like, okay, come on, guys. Right? Um, there's a lot of hedging that goes on sometimes. And it's like, we're trying to get something done. Right? All this and stuff is like, okay, but what about the citizens? Right? One more time, they, they need to be educated properly. They need to access their system that they're paying their tax dollars to. You just can't just, like, well, figure it out. It's like going to the bus stop and there's no bus stops. Like, like just flag it down. We'll just figure it out on your own. It's like, okay, see, this is my point. That is not how to approach citizens, right? That's a low standard, just do stuff like that. And so where I can weigh in from my position, just to make it a little bit better, to bring sensitivity to citizens, like, come on, guys, right? We, we should do better. Now, I do recognize that perhaps this, um, here, I, I would support it maybe the last year, 2020. I hopefully you can figure out a way to bring that in house. But are you really in the marketing business, right? Should it really be in transportation? We had that conversation. You don't have to solve it now. But let's just say we get through this moment, but y'all figure that out, okay? How do we do that? Is that a proper place? Because that's not what you do. Um, is it something that's better? Do we put that person over Rick Martin's in the group and they support you? But again, that's like putting the, 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 the million dollar system in a task commissioner. Uh, over in IT. Do we put this over in communication or do we put it with you? Y'all guys got to work that out. What is in the best interest? Uh, but I don't, um, I, I, I support the things as they are, um, but I want to acknowledge the fact that, Madam Chair, perhaps we can visit next year to bring the house. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Commissioner. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to say uh, the <coughs> fares is. And, I mean, uh, we use that for matching for your grants. Is it not a part of it? In, you in you anticipated uh, collecting so many dollars for, for the fares to apply to the matching funds well, in, in the, your original budget. In the that. Yes, ma'am, in the sense that fares go into the general budget and the, the match for the grant comes from the, from the general fund. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. So... This, this money is really going to come out of our general fund, too, so, yeah. But um, my concern is the contingency fund, um, $200,000, $276,000 was low, and now <laughs> we're going lower. Um, it concerns me because we have no rainy day fund with the, the roads and everything, and our contingency fund is very low, too, so uh, it's going to catch up with us, I'm afraid of. With that, I yield back. Okay. Um, I just want to add, if we decide to um, not do anything, 
which I want to do something because that education piece is important. If we decide to hire someone, we're going to have to look at benefits and all those things. That's going to be another call. So either way, it's going to be a hit. But this was probably the, 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 the uh, I call it the least path, path of resistance or where we're trying to go right now. We have an opportunity to put money in there, but if we hire somebody today, we got to take care of the health benefits and all those things that go along with it. So I'm, 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 I sit on the Transportation Committee and I'm in agreement to just this year outsource it one more time and then perhaps we'll be in a better position next year to, to hire someone in-house. But when we hire them, we realize we got all those other things that are going to come with it. But uh, being $100,000, it does not have to be bid out. That's a good question. But we've been utilizing this company all the time. So. I know it, but I, I just wondered. Uh, before it was split up. It it's was split up with fifty thousand, fifty thousand. Now it's a hundred thousand. It's professional services, right, Mark? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what does that mean when you say that? Because we don't have to bid it. Okay. That's about the bid last time. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to the next item, tab number twenty-three, authorization to approve the operating policies and procedures for Connect Douglas fixed route and paratransit services. Gary Watson. Yes, ma'am. As, as we move forward with our, our bus service, uh, we have had to put together a set of uh, standard operation policies and procedures for the bus service. It's, it's about 100 pages long. Uh, and it's, it really is basic things. Um, we put it to our legal department for review. They looked at it. They asked us to make one small change, um, which we did. Um, so it's good to go. The one thing about it that I do want to point out to the commissioners is that uh, through FTA regulations, we are required to have some mechanism in place to where we can stay in contact with the, uh, the disabled community to get their input on our services, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what needs to be changed. And so what we are uh, proposing to implement and as part of the standard operating uh, policy is develop, <clears throat> to develop a, an ADA advisory board. Now, this would work very similar to the animal control advisory board where we would meet with this committee on a regular basis and get their, their feedback. And the composition of this committee would be uh, the Connect Sur Douglas Transit Services Coordinator, which at this time is Jamal Shepard, um, one member from the, the Board of Commissioners, uh, the Connect Douglas uh, Federal Transit Administration Compliance Officer, um, the, our third party operators, on site manager, or the, their designee and then five advocates for the disabled community with ad one advocate to be chosen by each member of the Board of Commissioners. So we, we set that up to where basically each of you as a commissioner could select someone from your district uh, to be on this committee. <clears throat> and as with other boards, what we would do is we would have the county clerk to advertise that we have positions open on this, and then the names would be submitted to the Board of Commissioners for your approval. Mm -hmm. Pretty self-explanatory. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson has yeah. a question for you. Yeah, I mean, we're getting into these committees and we already owe McGill a recommendation from us for the cap the CTP process. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and, and then we will have, a, it's, we just got to coordinate all this, right? If you, you have citizens and they're confused about what they're getting involved, and I get you. Uh, but we, we got to pick and choose, like, okay, so where do I want my best person? I want them on this committee, or do I want them on that CTP, right? And it's just something to think about, guys, that we go both of them, like this one, and obviously we, we owe Miguel. Uh, uh, we've got tomorrow, <coughs> excuse me, Wednesday, a special call meeting to look at the finalists for the CTP process. And so we've got four um, firms coming in. Um, and professional services and they're going to um, do the oral part of their presentation they've already submitted their written and then obviously a recommendation will come to the full board um, last week of the year and out of that comes that award and then obviously they're getting for that 15 month so this is all <coughs> okay let's make sure we don't confuse who's where we're putting certain people on what committee um, I get it um, I just think the, the bigger transportation is the priority. 
right? That capital trans no comprehensive transportation plan is the highest priority. Um, <coughs> we we, we got to get that right. Um, that's going to help address all the needs um, that we're talking about. Um, I just wanted to put that out there now, too, that we don't confuse the two, because they are asking out of the same area for representations from. Well, this this is a requirement for, from the feds. We have to do it, and and we would hope that the the individuals that the commissioner select to be on this would be members of the disabled community, mm -hmm. specifically from the disabled mm -hmm. community. Okay. I, I got it. Well, again, thank you for the clarity. And we get that it's not a <coughs> not do it. It's make sure that there's no confusion. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Director Watson. We're going to move on to tab number 24, authorization to approve an agreement with Gina to participate in the statewide mutual aid agreement. Yeah, I'm here. Director Mulholland, I'm Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. This, this is a, a mutual uh, agreement is uh, what every county in the state and um, municipalities that choose to participate is where we can help one another uh, in times of emergencies and disasters. And also covers the financial part as a part of FEMA requirement. If we were to go to help somebody and it got really expensive, normally we just kind of trade back and forth with me. If I need help, you know, they'll come help me or, or, and vice versa. But sometimes that some of that help can be get really expensive. At that point, the financial aspect of that has to be addressed. And this is what this mutual aid agreement um, does, sets up um, how we help. And, that, uh, and if we choose to help, it's always our option to help or not help uh, a community or at request help from outside. Um, so this just kind of makes everything legal with FEMA. So we get to the reimbursement thing so we can get uh, reimbursed or or and get their our cost reimbursed if we bring folks in if you know if they're um, if we have a bunch of people come in from another county and we end up having <coughs> to pay them back that we can legally um, ask for reimbursement from FEMA under a US uh, presidential de um, declaration or otherwise or if it's not just the that financial part of it okay Board commissioners sounds like it's pretty explanatory thank you so much thank you for providing some insight all right tab number 25 authorization to award a task order in the amount of one hundred fourteen thousand one hundred twenty six dollars and seventy nine cents to low engineers for design of the maxim road sidewalk extension project to be funded from the 2016 SPLOS and i authorize the chairman to sign all related documents director valentine yes uh good afternoon madam good chair afternoon. and commissioners this item is uh as a result of the uh, series of on-demand contracts that were approved uh, a couple months ago, three months ago maybe, and uh, this one will go to the gap in the sidewalk uh, along Maxim Road. There is a project that's one of the items coming up, item 28. Uh, it will pick up where that project leaves off and connect uh, the sidewalk into Cobb County at uh, Alabama Road. We, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the on-demand contract was approved several months ago. We reached out to the consulting firm that was designated for that particular task, and they gave us a proposal. It was within our uh, estimated uh, value for the proposal. Uh, actually, it was below, and so we were recommending uh, the Transportation Committee is recommending the award of this task order to uh, low engineers. Okay. Any questions? I'll move on to the next item. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. <coughs> no, I just want to acknowledge this because this is important. This is as a result um, became a priority for sidewalks in the county, um, not um, you know, in certain curated areas that um, with the mixture of high volumes of cars and trucks um, that um, you know, we needed to separate. We had um, a fatality um, in that area. Uh, the lack of sidewalks as being sort of a safe passage. And so this is just the beginning for, at least in, 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 in District 2, the need to, to, to continue that. Um, this is something that I do not suggest as a countywide type of approach, but it was something that was a priority for our district, for citizens um, um, to, to, to acknowledge um, not everybody doesn't want to walk in dirt and mud and long sideways and that there is a cost associated with this. Um, they're putting this in place and like people say, well, can I get some street lights? Can I get some sidewalks? 
And so it, it's a need to continue to push on this. But again, you hate that it, it took, um, obviously, um, a fatality uh, to make it, um, like, pay attention to it. But at the same point, as you acknowledge, this Maxim Road um, and um, obviously um, uh, Thornton Road is a highly um, high crash area, high vitality area independently, and we've been trying to reconstruct this thing for quite some time. Um, I mean, for a long time, and we're finally here, so I appreciate you holding that, because um, we knew it was sort of a state project. There was a lot that needed to be coordinated with this. Um, there's a lot of volume that comes out of Cobb down to Maxim that congests right there at that I-20, especially from everything from Paulding coming from the north side down CJH, H. James Parkway. And so this is a very important intersection, but it's going to get a little messy here. <laughs> Um, because obviously this reconstruction is going to be pretty. Um, so how long do you think that's going to take? We can you, we can speak to it later, but just hit it since we're talking about it. Yeah, uh, the project, uh, if if the award is made uh, yeah. as part of this agenda, well, well tomorrow actually, uh, for item 28, that project mm -hmm. will get going essentially in the new year. And uh, the design of the, of the sidewalk project will take probably nine months, ten months to complete. So it will be ready to go to, hopefully there's not going to be a lot of right-of-way acquisition, perhaps none. Uh, if that is the case, then it might be ready to go into construction at the beginning of 2021. So it's going to take nine months just to design a sidewalk. You would think that that would be a street. I mean, it's just amazing how we have identified so many sidewalks out the county strategically. And it's just, you know, even around the schools for safe passage, it just seems like, they take just as long or longer than a regular street. And, and I do get it, but it's just like, gosh, you would think it's just a sidewalk. But, but, mm -hmm. Thank you, Miguel. We're going to move on to tab number 26. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Authorization to award a task order in the amount of $163,335.89 to the firm of Michael, Michael Baker International for design of the Highway 5 Douglas Boulevard intersection right turn lane project to be funded from the 2016 school office and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentine again. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This particular project uh, has been discussed so many times, uh, <laughs> probably over the last several years. And it is uh, rather timely because, um, I don't know if you've seen the paper over the weekend, yeah. but uh, the city is now considering a development uh, for that very corner. Now, uh, we have been coordinating with them, and so uh, they have sent over the, the uh, concept plan that the uh, developer uh, was proposing to the city. Initially, it did not incorporate that turn lane. Mm -hmm. uh, since that time, we've been uh, trying to arrive at a consensus. We haven't yet, we'll keep trying, <clears throat> but, but now they acknowledge that there's going to be a need for a turn lane there. We're tr figuring out how to accommodate it. So, uh, again, uh, as, as soon as this proposal uh, or this contract is uh, consummated, uh, signed, we will engage the consultant to begin the coordination process with the developer to work out the details of how that turn lane can be incorporated into their view. Okay. okay. It was very scary when I read the headlines yeah. <laughs> today because I thought, oh gosh, they're talking about that corner there. Uh, just make sure this does not get away from us because uh, it's going to make or break the moment. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they need to um, uh, make sure that they allow enough room for that right turn lane. It, again, it was backed up to Stewart Parkway uh, this weekend. So, and it's just gonna get worse, so I yield. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next one, which is tab number 27, authorization to award the task order in the amount of $151,504 to Pond and Company for design of the SR Will State Route 92 and Riverside Intersection <coughs> Improvement Project to be funded from the 2016 SPLOS and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, this is uh, another one that's been discussed over the last uh, several months at least. Um, this particular one, uh, we had a discussion as to whether we would consider uh, not only this intersection, but the one upstream from it or north of that location. This particular proposal does not inc include that one. 
but we are having discussions about that. Uh, this, uh, again, will take about the same time period to do, it because it is on a state route, it will require more co coordination with GDOT. However, uh, we still anticipate that it will take about the same time to, to design. <coughs> and um, the, uh, uh, the expectation is that uh, uh, if we are successful in completing the design, it, will, it could go into construction in early 2021 as well. So we'll move on to the next item. Tab, tab number 28, authorization to award a contract to C.W. Matthews Contracting Company Incorporation in the amount of $2,850,508.81 for construction of the CR uh, 635 Maxim Road from State Route 6 to Tree Terrace Parkway, which is PI number 0012621 project, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentino. on that Thank you, Madam Chair. This, this particular contract, uh, the bid actually was uh, received back in late May and is taken uh, until now for the Georgia Department of Transportation to work this to their process. It was before you uh, for approval uh, of the agreement, the funding agreement. And um, the, the state uh, began the process of going digital, if you will, with their contracting process. Uh, it had gone through the board and approved, and we were ready to submit the uh, hard copy of the contracts to them when they indicated that now they, are, they were going digital. So it added to the timeline. However, it has now been approved through GDOT as well. They have granted us a notice to proceed to award the contract. So this is now not the funding contract, but the actual construction contract going to C.W. Matthews and uh, the expectation is that as soon as uh, the contract are signed uh, we will give them a notice, we'll, we will hold, it, hold the pre-construction meeting and give them a notice to proceed so the, so the work will start in 2020. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Commissioner Carthen. So Director Valentin, so the funds we haven't received yet, this is just in the beginning stages, so we will have to do, we will have to come up with the funds first. That then. that is correct. All of, all of these um, contracts that have federal funds are reimbursable, mm -hmm. so the county has to front the money, uh, and then we ask or invoice GDOT, and we do that on a monthly basis. Uh, sometimes we may take a couple of months, but generally periodically as the as the job progresses. Uh, we're paying invoices and then we're turning around and invoicing GDOT and they're reimbursing us as we go. Okay. Now, is there a match for this particular? Yes, th there is a match for, the, uh, for this uh, and this is coming out uh, again uh, out of the Capital Transportation Fund. Um, the match for this, uh, I'll have to do it off the top of my head. I, I, off my head. I believe it's $580,000 and some change, um, but that's been allocated, uh, that funding's been allocated in the transportation, capital transportation fund. Okay, thank you. I yield my Okay. All right, any other questions? We'll move on. Last but not least, tab mm -hmm. number 29, authorization to file application uh, with uh, GDOT for the local acceptance program, LAP recertification to enable the county to administer federal aid transportation projects for the next three years and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents directly to the Yes, Madam Chair. Th this uh, application, again, it, it has to be re upped every three years. Uh, the the uh, Georgia DOT goes through a rather extensive um, audit, if you will, of the county's program to make sure that we're following all of the protocol. Uh, we have begun this process, well, probably started it several months ago, and so we've done a lot of the preliminary work. It is now to the, to the point where we're ready to submit the final application. The, the um, county certification ends at the end of 2019, uh, so we have to uh, finalize the process so to be certified from 2020 through 2023. Our expectation is that, um, that we will be recertified. 
Um, the processes that we have in place now are in uh, accordance with the federal criteria and the state requirements. And so um, uh, this is a, an application process that all counties and municipalities that handle federal funds on transportation projects uh, have to go through. But again, it, it is a rather rigorous uh, audit process uh, from GDOT and federal IRS. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right, thank you so much, Director Valentini. At this time, uh, you are there any other comments from the board? So I'll check with the attorney to see if we need to go into the session. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. For legal and for uh, land. Okay. Board commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Okay, we have a five on unanimous vote. Please take a 10 minute break and report back. Thank you. All right, we're back on. Thanks. Okay, Board of Commissioners, do we have anything else to add to this meeting? Okay, if, that's, if there are no other further comments or concerns, this meeting is adjourned.